Hello everyone, and welcome back to Star Trek Nighthawk, the second episode of the second season. I don't really have any th announcements to say, so we'll just jump right into the captain's log. Oh boy, this is going to be fun. <laughs> captain's log started 829.81.1. Our previous war game simulation with the Coronet Cruiser Dark Royal was brief, was brief but eventful. Although their ship capabilities match or exceed Starfleet vessels in some circumstances, the captain is the most interesting of the bunch. The crew itself, while capable, is tied together by him. The Federation liaison we have on board has a lot of work ahead of her, and so does the rest of Starfleet. Director Chalmers and Commander Area should better brief her on her potential complications during their brief stay at Deep Space 15. I've ordered us to return to Scorpi Space. Our sensor logs during the Draven attack show additional strange emissions surrounding the nebula, which warrant a closer look. Additionally, Commander Bashir informs me that it's now time for crew evaluations. Of course, all my personal opinions on this crew will be classified during this festive time of year, considering it's also Christmas Eve. A human holiday for which we redress the ship full of replicated tinsel and red and green coloring. Just this once, I hope that whatever's in this nebula is a fun surprise for my crew instead of one that will go shoot back. Then log. Indeed. So, as it has been stated, it is currently Christmas Eve, according to the Stardates. Uh, the humans have, uh, and several aliens who are interested in human customs, have petitioned the captain to decorate the interior of the ship um, to with a more festive color scheme. The ca um, however, the captain is currently not able to partake in such festivities as he is having his first senior staff crew evaluation. And Captain, who would you like to interview first? So I'd like to interview uh, Lieutenant Commander Helsing. Oh, it just so happens that he's the first. His token's already here. So let's surprising. Cut to the ready room. All right. March on up. No, it's not. Uh, despite me actually shifting the players to the ready room. Are people able to see them? The ready room? Yes. I don't see the ready room. I see the uh, captain's office. Uh huh. Or is that the ready room? Yeah. Yep, yeah, ready room, captain's office, that should be it. Why is my other screen not updating? Oh, I know why. Because I am doing this. Sorry, just having to reload roll 20. Okay, there we go. Okay, Captain Singral, it's in your uh, captain's office, and there's the chime at the door. Flynn. Take Commander Helsing reporting, sir. Oh, fantastic. Have a seat, Lieutenant Commander. Walk walk on up. Give the Starfleet equivalent of a salute and sit down. So, it's been six months. We've been out here. How you uh how you doing? Preparing for Christmas? As well as we can, yes sir. Been writing some letters to my to my sister. Kind of tough at this time of year been separated from family. I mean, I understand. I mean, we've been out here for some time, so, you know, you gotta try to get that family and when you can't. Honestly, I never really understood this holiday too well. I mean, I celebrated it, obviously, when I was on Earth for the Academy, and I understand what, what it means to you guys, but honestly, it seems like such a such a big hub of I mean, do you really need, like, this one specific time of day just to connect with your family? It, for me personally, not really the way we grew up. It wasn't really celebrated but just the sense of family around it it just brings that about oh okay well that's nice to hear speaking of family though how are you getting along with uh with this one pretty good i i, I think i pull, pulling together a good security team really pleased with how uh um uh, Loxley's been coming along, um, getting with the other um, officers. It's in crewmen. It's it's been it's been fine. Got a good crew coming. 
Yes, yes, Loxley. Speaking of which, considering I was looking, you know, over the, the mission logs and the reports, out of a lot of people that are, that are on your staff, it really seems like her, she really came into her own after after the Draven attack. At least in her, her, her circumstances involved taking back the ship was honestly quite impressive. Uh, she definitely, definitely was. What do you think that warrants, Commander? I've been preparing um, a ward's recommendation. It's definitely for Valor, if not a promotion. I mean, I was thinking the same thing. And the next time we actually get back to Federation space, I was most definitely probably going to put her in. Her name has a recommendation for the uh, the uh, Legion of Valor. But you don't think anything else is in order? A promotion, perhaps? Oh, I said award and promotion. Why? Well, I mean, just in terms of, do you really feel like that she has, the, if she can accomplish everything here on this ship alone? Don't get me wrong, this mission is important and we'd be at a loss to be without her. But looking over her service record here, it really seems like that she has the capability to be something more. I totally agree. When I'm away on an away mission, I have full faith and confidence in her leading the ship, or when I have to maintain the helm, maintain the station, full faith and confidence in her leading an away team and keeping the team safe and bringing them back. So, she is definitely my my second on the security office. Yeah, but uh, what if she was first? That would be interesting. Is there some place you would rather me go? No, no, not at all. I'm just saying that, you know, in terms of all of, like the the crew members that we have on the ship and everybody's specialized roles, that at sometimes it feels like, you know, people may not necessarily want to change your pace occasionally, and it seems like, regardless outside of your own reports here everybody in security seems to necessarily like you but i'm getting random well let's just say there are some other people not myself of course that seem less satisfied with your approach to things all right if there's an area where i can improve i'd be glad to take constructive criticism well i don't necessarily have all the details right now and quite honestly you're the first person that i've met with but I need to follow up with these other individuals. They, I wouldn't necessarily call them complaints, but more, more, so, uh, more so operational concerns. In any case, Commander, I just wanted you to be kept in mind. But regardless of which, if there's anything else you need to say to me, uh, you have the freedom to do so. Otherwise, carry on. Hi, uh, sir. Um, Roger. You, you definitely get you don't even have to make it just a strong sense of confusion on coming off of me right now so going to try to figure out who what man i hope so <laughs> yeah definitely confused thoroughly th thoroughly well done um i sir permission to be dismissed Granted. Take care of yourself. I will do, and I kind of stumble over a chair a little bit as I head on out the door, kind of giving that quizzical, what just happened look as I leave. <laughs> okay. Now, while that is going on, we are in, we are currently going through the, uh, the same nebula that we had encountered the Draven in. It's a sickly nebula uh, filled with dark brown and blue gases, and it in emits a fairly heavy amount of radiation. Um, I believe it was theta and gamma radiation. Um, due to the nature of said nebula, well, you guys are proceeding at only warp 5, as it is as quick as possible to get through without causing severe damage to the ship. And it allows you guys to gather as much information about the nebula as possible. So what I would like to do is figure out... Now, 
we recently got a bunch of new support characters. Have we filled out the science crew? Doesn't look like we have yet. So we are going to go to Astrometrics, where the ch chief science officer slash second in command is going to be having a chat with uh, Leva, Kino Leva Accor, the ship's science officer, or Astrometrics officer. And does anybody else wish to investigate this or take part in the investigation of the nebula? It does not sound like anyone's interested. Hey. Okay. If I wasn't I, busy with crew evaluations, I totally would. Well, I'm, I might have to because I might be needing to look for a new job that somewhere. <laughs> but my science is only one. Uh, the show's very busy with uh, Christmas Christmas preparations. That does not surprise me. How does Togi like the tinsel hat we got him? A little star on top. Yes, he's actually he's actually hosting karaoke uh, Christmas carols. Okay. Um, uh, Coax would actually be interested. I'm sorry, I was muted. I oh. said I would probably be interested in just a cursory. I want to check in uh, on the commander and just kind of see how he's doing after the battle. Um, sure. th that's the mo main reason. But if he's there, I'd probably like to just okay. uh, straight up. So we have Coax, uh, Accor, and C Commander Bashir. Uh, so the scene begins as Accor is pulling up what is known about the nebula. It spans almost an entire sector's worth of space, uh, stretching well into two, uh, two and three. As she's poking through it, she's like, Commander, I'm not entirely sure what I'm seeing. Most nebula decay over time as they're... Inter as internal gravity takes over and nebula begin to form a new star. However, if I'm reading this right, I'm showing a actually an increase in nebula mass even since the last time we were through here. That doesn't seem possible, sir, given the what we know of nebula. Interesting. The last time we were through here was the attack, right? That's correct. No. About about okay. two weeks ago. Two weeks ago. Okay. Um, now we picked up radiation similar to this beforehand, didn't we? When we were uh, found that giant spear. Very similar, or... sir. She'll bring. She'll tap the console. Bring up the uh, the uh, the star. The that mysterious sphere. However, the spear data. Yeah. However, that was a very localized event, uh, more of a fissure in reality, sir. If I had to guess, this nebula, well, aside from being a stellar nursery, it, I died, I, yeah, I'm sorry, gee, I'm losing track of plot. <clears throat> ah. Ah. If I had, to, this nebula is quite different, sir, um, aside from the intense radiation, this nebula appears to just be expanding upon rather than contracting. I, assuming it's been doing this for the last several hundred years, probably longer than that. It's weird, sir. Hmm. <sighs> Doctor. Um. I'm curious. If we were to collect and send out a probe and actually collect samples. Um, would it be possible for you to run uh, a spectral exam? Oh, of course. I have uh, some precise equipment, I think. Um, we could definitely do that. I would be quite interested in learning the nature of this nebula. Okay. So yeah, I, I mean, I'd like to do. I would like to send out some probes, and actually collect samples of the dust and debris, and you know, basically organic samples of what is to see if like what is going on here. If it is basically a life like growing, or if anything we could find out would be amazing. She bobs her her head uh, subtly. Of course, sir. And I will, I will prepare this. I will let you know when the samples are, are ready for analysis. Thank you. Continue. Of course. 
So I pull as uh, I let her continue on. I want to ask the doctor if he's had any chance to investigate the uh, what we've collected um, about the Scorpi. Uh, you know what? I I don't think I have done that. I, I was meaning to get to, with you about that. Um, perhaps while we're waiting for the samples, we could even do that ourselves and take a cursory look. I think uh, the specimen is quite interesting. It'll take us a good time. Would you care to do that now? Sure, we could do that now while we're waiting for more, uh, get the probe's information back. So which specimen are you referring to, Doctor? Are you, are you referring to the Scorpi corpses that were discovered about six months ago? Or are you referring right. to the one that was a pet warrior thing to the... The sample we received from the one ship, uh, they were dead. We took ah, a detailed oh, scan. Yes, um I was hoping that it, rather yeah. than like a physical specimen, we were making a uh, kind of a, a, a holodeck version that we can kind of ah. pour over and kind of investigate. That is a very good idea. Okay, uh, where would you like this discussion to take place? Sick bay? Um, do we have a holodeck? We do we can... indeed have a holodeck. I would think that would be, I mean, we could possibly, if the medical bay has one as well, um, right. but we'd probably be best if we did it in the, the holodeck. Holodeck it is. Be gone, Captain. Okay. Welcome to sickbay, or welcome to the holographic okay. office. And you're looking to bring up the Scorpi, correct? Right. There's okay. detailed scans um, that have been uploaded. So, uh, computer, please upload this, the uh, the detailed scan of the Scorpi individual that we have uh, in my personal file, or in the, uh, the sick lab's uh, file, and upload it to the holodeck, please. Working. And within a couple, within about 10 seconds or so, there is a Scorpi. And for those of you who are just paying, who are tuning in, the Scorpi are a centaur race, uh, half human torso upward and scorpion lower bottom, including the, including claws and uh, stinging tail. Uh, it stands about four to five feet tall. Uh, fairly muscular in appearance, and the shell is um, black for the time being. Okay. Uh, does it now, with, with the scan, they were in some sort of a spacesuit. Um, does uh, I would assume that this scan still has that intact, right? It would, yes. Okay. Uh, before we begin, uh, Commander, uh, is there anything you would like on the, the surface to examine? I'm be interested in more of like physiology and uh, I'm curious if this is where we're going to uh, track down this ancient technology. It's obviously their space and we're going to have to cross with them at some point. Um, I did get some data from this original spear on the race, but it was very limited and ancient like well not ancient but it was over 40 some years old so it's nothing realistically new but honestly yeah i want to be prepared because the only time we've come across anything so far has been corpses of these creatures <laughs> mm. very true a live specimen would be completely different um oh, yes. computer um, is it possible to extrapolate and begin um, using their suit that the specimen is contained in um, create artificial breathing so that we may see um, what kind of atmosphere this creature might entail and mixture all right <clears throat> computer ch churns away for a split second the creature uh, this creature breathes in appears to process oxygen and um, ah, and breathe ah breathes out carbon dioxide, similar to most most species that could inhabit Class M worlds. Okay. Um, and so the the suit that it has on, what kind of respiration is it using? Uh, is it um, you know, where is the breathing going through the mouth? Is it you know any other process going on? It, uh, the the air is being produced so, so that it can be bre uh, bre inhaled through the nostrils and mouth. Okay. Uh, All right. I think that's what I wanted to know just about the basics of that suit. Um, so, um, computer, can we disrobe the patient now, please? 
And just like that, the suit mater dematerializes, and there is a Scorpy standing completely <coughs> inert, its dead eyes open, facing f forward, and its expression is completely blank. Um, how does the commander feel about that, just for empathic reasons? Um, not he that doing okay? surprise. I'm fascinated, yeah. yeah. Oh, okay, excellent. Making sure oh, he's I'm, not uncomfortable. Uh, no, no. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay, very good. I, I just uh, yeah read the chat board. Um, <laughs> so, uh, can we is is the tail weaponized? Can we get any sort of cross examination? Uh, this would be an insight medicine test or an insight security, one or the other. And Ooh. if you have exobiology or in um, invertebrate sciences, anything like that would work. This is going to be a difficulty one. Okay, was this for the commander or myself? Whichever one of you, or I'm assuming the commander could ask you to, to use the test, because you are the doctor after all. Nudge, nudge, wink, wink. <laughs> okay, got you. you want me to do it? Okay. Uh, one more time for me. What was it? It was uh, control? Uh, insight, insight medicine. Insight medicine. Mm hmm. Okay, and a difficulty of one, so... Yep. Okay, I'll just go ahead and roll that, and, um... Xenobiology? Yeah, that would work. Okay. And that is two successes, so one momentum. Okay. So it does appear to be a fairly similar in design to a scorpion's tail on Earth. Um, it is primarily whatever invertebrates use for muscle. Um, uh, can contract lightning quickly. It appears to at least have a little bit of prehensileness based on what you were able to determine through the medical scanners. Uh, the tail itself, this one appears to not have a stinger attached. Instead, uh, where you would have the stinger, there appears to be a sort of like a hook to hang something on. So, <coughs> hook? Yeah. So, like a coat rack. So uh, oh, is that augmented? Is it uh, is it an augment, or you know, did this, it look like that was formed out of the natural body? This does appear to be an augment. Oh, fascinating! So it looks like someone has been uh, playing with uh, our specimen's uh, physiology. Interesting. I wonder who would do that. Um, okay, so uh, now let's take a detailed look of the uh, pincers. The um, it looks like the the creature. So, I, I, as as per the picture, uh, it looks like he has two arms and then two pinchers. That is correct. Okay, um, the arms are so the the arms are of a humanoid. Yes. That is correct. Okay, so let's take a look a de more detailed look at these pinchers. Okay. Um, and what I would like to know is, are these augments as well? Are these stapled on, so to speak? Or okay. does it look like it matches with the rest? Uh, you don't need a medicine test to see that the pincers are part of the organic body. Part of the organic body. Mm-hmm. Okay. So, now, the next thing is the seam between the humanoid half and the scorpion half, wherever that meets. Um, is that part of the same... Does it look, you know, does it look like it was thrown together, like fused? Does it look like it grew together? Um, this is where things get weird. That's what I was gonna say. Is it genetic or is it, like, it's, you know, how? So there appears to be a neural linkage between the humanoid body, so the humanoid brain stem, connects into the spinal column of the humanoid air individual. And, you know, everything torso up does look like standard humanoid. So, you know, arm bones, leg bone, or arm bones, chest bones, heart, lungs, five fingers on each hand. You know, pretty standard. However, as soon as you get down to the seam, let's say, um, the various, uh, ner various uh, nerves and um, whatnot exit, th exit out the spinal column and connect into... It's not a brain per se, more of a nervous controller, nervous system controller, 
which then um, begins to spread throughout the um, what's the word I'm looking invertebrate half, aka the scorpions half. So it is a fusion of vertebra vertebrate into invertebrate, and this this is literally the only species that you have encountered that is as fully evolved as this thing is. There are, you know, digging through records and stuff, which I'm assuming you've done because it's been two weeks. Um, there are certainly some species, you know, sea life, crabs, um, various lower evolved species on some worlds that have evolved a similar system, but nothing like this. So the next question is DNA wise, can this, okay, so it evolved, so this is this could grow normally or I, I guess more directly it, does it look like somebody had to interfere to make this happen or could it have grown by itself um, this is going to require an insight medicine test um, okay. the ship can assist with computers plus medicine <coughs> and this is going to be a difficulty of three Got the ship. insight medicine and difficulty three difficulty um, three it, is everybody okay if I go ahead and use a momentum? No problems here. Okay. And then xenobiology again? Yep, that'll work. Okay. Oh, wow. Okay. Uh, ship, ship doesn't help, but you're just so bloody brilliant. Uh, so that's one momentum right back. Okay, so uh, we, our momentum pool is just one then. Yep, that's right. Um, um, you're... So... There... Uh, so... M Humanoid DNA is, um, oh, I should have remembered this. I think it is 52 um, uh, strands of DNA, or no, a DNA is made up of 52 pairs of whatever DNA is made of. Uh, this species is made up of roughly 102 uh, oh. strands. It is a highly complex species. Um, it's not unusual for some species to have more uh, thicker genome than others but usually those usually the insects and whatnot are on the slimmer side um, your analysis indicates that the species has gr can grow completely you know from young baby wh whatever horror that may look like all the way to old age and natural death but you are the more you look at this the more you are certain that this creature is or this species was not created through evolution but there's someone else interfering with mm -hmm. it fascinating what I'm do you think about that commander well we've already had more than a couple of occasions of running into genetic manipulation in this area it's becoming quite a theme <laughs> Is there any information that I can pull up from the previous, like, the spear data or anything that we've collected about their society? Um, mm -hmm. Particular, like, I mean, like, what stage of society? Okay. Um, anything along that lines. Okay. Uh, this will be an ins... Uh, use uh, reason plus science. Uh, the ship can assist with computers plus science. This will be a difficulty of two. Okay. And I'll get the computer this time. All right. All right. Computer is good. And that's two successes from Bashir, so one more momentum for you guys. Nice. The only information that you have on the Scorpi species directly comes from the uh, you from the Deep Space 15 encounter log with their uh, ruined trader ship. Um, <clears throat> you where they've they believe that the Scorpi appear to have been a mercantile species. Um, operating out from the home system known as Arkenfall. Not much is not much is recorded of their uh, species. It appears that their computer cores were fairly primitive compared to 
even uh, almost even NX01 standard. Um, so there's not much data on the society itself. The blog mostly concerned itself with uh, trading spe trading specific species encounters and the like. Um, you get the fact that, or you get the feeling that they're um, a guild, or at least the particular ship that was encountered was a guild, uh, which could speak to their species as, you know, segregated into different working classes, perhaps. But beyond that, you don't have much further information. Okay. So my next um, more direct question, what I want to figure out from a, a medical standpoint, is I'd like to uh, break apart the physiology a little bit, you know, kind of, you know, mm -hmm. to take the, uh, the scorpion half and just kind of separate him. Mm -hmm. And then I want to look at his nervous system and I want to see, because it looks like the outer layer is pretty tough. But from a medical standpoint, is there any way that I could subdue, we could subdue the scorpion um, with, you know, some si simple sedative and where that might be the most effective, if that's something you, you could just, you could administer it just like normal, okay. or if it would require more. Okay. Uh, that sounds like a good um, scene to fade out on as you continue to work away on that, because okay. that's going to basically take a day for you, to, uh, several days for you to poke apart and figure out its physiology in that level of detail that you're looking for. Okay. So we are going to cut um, we are going to cut to the shuttle bay where you, where Erkin or where Lieutenant Erkin Alak has called in Mr. Thashran because Mr. Thashran has been uh, decorating a lot of engineering and Erkin, I believe your interest is you want to see what the shuttle might look like with Christmas lights, just because I think it's a fun Christmassy scene. <laughs> Which of us are both here at the same time, or is it one of us here first? I would think Erkin is the first one to arrive. Or maybe he never left. I never <laughs> leave. <laughs> uh, I pop into the room at Erkin, I have brought some uh, festive supplies to um, brighten up this... this this is it's a strange tradition from one non-human to another isn't it well all, all i think all cultural um things are weird amongst humans but this is a in interesting one we should we should uh, celebrate um th these weird yes uh sure i see uh, are these little round why are we putting little round men with beards on it oh i've that's heard the that santa thing I've heard that he is a, a gift giver, where he um, he forges un, un, unexcavated uh, diamonds to, to terrible children and gives um, plastic uh, trinkets to good children for some reason. Oh, all right. I wonder also, I, I've uh, found these gi giant um, antlers and uh, re a red ball to stick on the front of the ship. <sighs> Does it provide extra illumination at night? Possibly. You will have to we'll have to um, polish it very very heavily in order to make it. Uh... Very well. I'm in. You've convinced me of this strange human tradition. And in a pinch, the antlers could be used as a last last ditch um, weapon in at random. Well, considering what we just got rammed with, I'd say anything's a good start. Uh... Oh, you never know. It's always good to be prepared. Oh, no, I 100% I get it. <laughs> soon, soon the enemies of the uh, Federation shall learn to fear our antler. <laughs> antler ram. <laughs> uh, All right, the festive decorations we go. Erkin just looks confused, but almost bound by duty that he has to make this look as best as possible in case he gets called out on a mission. <laughs> Half well, whilst decorating. This It'll be, be good. The brightest stealth ship we've ever created. It'll be good if we, ever, if we land a planet that happens to have humans on it, and then they they'll instantly be at ease as, upon seeing this festival. I do want, want I do want some of these plastic trinkets. Uh, okay. You guys have spent this. You guys have spent several 
minutes, if not longer, decorating the shuttle. And we should we get into one argument that, that results in five minutes of silence. <laughs> no, you can't have two lights of the same color next to each other. I don't know why it's tradition, it just is. <laughs> oh. like, no, you can't overcharge the lights, you're going to blow a fuse. Uh, very well. A suitable amount of time has passed, and uh, Lieutenant Akal has uh, called the captain and uh, the commander to astrometrics. Pardon me, sirs. Uh, she states with a little bit of nervousness. Uh, you can see that she has a full uh, diagram of the nebula up on the screen. But I figured you should look at th look into this. As she begins p pulling up uh, scientific or chemical formulas. Well, sir, the nebula appears to be a bog standard um, class 14 nebula filled with, you know, ionized gases, heavy particle fields, complex or complex um, ah, or complex molecules that are typically formed after a third generation star goes supernova. Uh, however, sir, she pulls up this nebula should should not be this mass. I'm tr I've run the sis I've run the system as hard as I ah, I've run the computer simulations thoroughly. And there's no star of any mass that has been encountered that could explode and leave this much uh, radiation or gas behind, let alone any nebula that expands and leaves this amount of heavy radiation in perpetuity. And then she... And that's when I started looking at the energy being that was recorded by the nebula, trying to filter out all the filter out all of the radiation being generated that's overloaded much of the spectrum. And she pulls up a small band of um, a, a small band as she goes, ah! So she pulls up several overlapping sine waves uh, points at each one as the, she's eliminating them. Then I'm left with this, sir. I don't understand where it is. Or what it is. Or where it's, well... I do have an idea where it's coming from, sir, but it's harder it's hard to find or it's hard to say for sure. We'd have to get out of the nebula. Okay. So what is it exactly? What is she? Right. Okay, go on. <laughs> <laughs> no, I defer to you, Commander. I, I was gonna say we both look wait, so what did you find? <laughs> She's nervously stumbling her uh, like what is it? <laughs> Well, sir, it's a it's a background, what appears to be a baryon particles, that appear to be getting more and more dense the closer we get to, the, Scorpi space, sir. It's something to do with the particles, and then they, they appear to be self-generating, self-replicating, breaking down into what we're seeing, and then just adding to the mass of the nebula. So, so is it coming from or going to the area? It's more... It's denser the closer we get to Scorpy space, sir. However, there does a... Um, according to the probe scans, and once again she pulls it up, it does... There is a hard edge to the nebula. Well, as hard as you can... A hard edge as you can get to a heavy gas... Or a heavy gas... Sector of space, sir. Sort of peters out far quicker than most uh, su than most uh, dispersion pa patterns I've seen. Is the exit to this nebula in the same direction where these baryon particles are located? It would seem to be, sir. Aren't baryon particles lethal to us? At least to the majority of this crew. Uh, what well, with enough density, yes, sir. And she does pause. There will, of course, need to be a baryon sweep. However, thanks to a recent, uh, uh, thanks to recent uh, 
deflector dish technology improvements with the uh, 24th century starship design pa patterns. Most starships have been have been created with uh, small baryonic field generators that could be deployed mobily on the ex external part of the, ah, the external portion of the hull to disperse any buildup of the radiation. As long as we keep our shields up, sir, we'll be fine. So can I make can I make a crazy, possibly like daring or insane uh, medicine check? And I'm just gonna come right out and ask. I want to look for signs of life. Okay. Um, this will be uh, signs of life inside the nebula, or the nebula okay. itself being a life form. Alive, yeah, Fair that's enough. what I was. Okay. Um, I, I'll tell you what, Doc. Or, uh, come <laughs> Sorry. Uh, Captain, I'll do it. <laughs> this is more my field. Okay. <laughs> Go for it. So this will be an in uh this will be an insight science. Uh this will be a difficulty of two, uh let's see, difficulty of three. Uh ship can assist with sensors science or sensors medicine. Um and if you have astrophysics, um astro navigation, uh exobiology might work. Particle science, stuff like that. I got xenobiology. That should work well enough. If someone wishes to assist, uh, a call or or a core or Sengral, you could either you could roll to assist if you'd like. But it doesn't look like you need to. Um, Bashir just got the two successes. Oh wait, it's difficulty three. So, can the ship assist? Please let the ship assist. I gotta go pull up the ship. Give me a second. Yep, One no moment. problem. I got it up. Pull up the ship again. Uh, ship is sen um, sensor science or sensors medicine. Let's see. Sensor science. Okie dokie. I'm back. Nice. Okay, so that's one more point of momentum. And don't forget that the uh, ship's high fidelity sensors allow you to gain one momentum, which you can ask a question for free if you'd like. Uh, so, thankfully, or un it's either thankfully or, you know, uh, disappointingly, the nebula does not appear to be alive. Um, you do see a. Uh, now that you know what you're to look for, the uh, baryon particles. They are definitely being pushed into the nebula, and it's forming some sort of. Well, it it would look like on one side a river, a river, ah, a river dam, and on the other side, A.K.A. the side that you have just that you have entered from, it looks like a spillover, for lack of a better term. So the ne the baryon particles are highest in the. Mm, are, are highest density closest to Scorpy space, and are far, far less dense, petering away to nothing on the other side of Scorpy space. In retrospect, I should have come up with a diagram, but probably would have been would have been better. But oh well, theater of the mind. And as science officer, you do get a question. Do you, <sighs> instead of it being a life form, it, are they, does it, it seem like they're building a wall? That would be a very interesting choice of words, but that does appear to, you know, taking the nebula as a whole there is a significant amount of similarity between it and, say, you know, large defensive structures like the uh, Earth's much lauded uh, Great Wall of China or the Andorians' um, ice barriers. Yeah, that's what I was thinking. Okay. However, your ship's shields do appear to be strong enough to push through. 
just don't drop yeah. them or you might kill everyone on board. Right. So it looks like they're trying to protect themselves using high intensity radiation. Anything else, Captain? <laughs> or do should we get prepared for a meeting? <laughs> I want to go back to crew evaluations, but it seems okay. like it takes more precision. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, uh, well, you can do that. I'll uh, I'll uh, head it straight to Scorpy Space. <laughs> in any case, the energy readings in this nebula were strange from the immediate time we uh, we set foot here the first time, which is why we're back. And whatever actually decides to hide behind whatever this weird nebula slash barrier is. I just want to make sure that it doesn't necessarily have to be... I want to make sure it's determined that it's not a threat. It feels like something wants to keep it... I don't necessarily... My instinct doesn't necessarily tell me that there's immediate feelings of malice here going on. And if there is... If somebody truthfully... If, if somebody truthfully thought of us as a threat, they wanted to keep us out they probably would have done so and it seized their moment of opportunity when the draven attacked us in here so Agreed. whatever if there is if there does happen to be something beyond the veil then it probably doesn't like visitors so we should proceed with caution not all all right so prepare prepare to try to prepare to plot a course into the veil um stand by to also notify Commander Thishran to reroute emergency power if necessary to the shields to make sure uh, the Baryon sweep doesn't kill us. Uh, pull power from whatever part of the ship is necessary and keep me informed. Absolutely, Captain. <laughs> also prepare a shell. I mean, we do have this new runabout. It's probably time for us to test it. True. All right, I will. I will come uh, the Tran and basically told him no matter his top priority, besides the decorations, is to make sure our shields don't go down no matter what, uh, and explain the deadliness of the situation. And uh, yeah, um, I will have Erkin go ahead and uh, prepare our new shuttle toy. <laughs> Oh, I guess I should, I should unplug my baby Jesus nativity scene. <laughs> <laughs> did, Possible. Did. It's probably best for the Nighthawk itself to proceed under cloak if it doesn't draw too, too much power away from the shields, but the shields are top priority. Okay. Okay, so we're going to have a small shuttle scene with Urkin. Um, does anyone wish to go with Urkin? Yeah, talky. Okay. Uh, I might yes. need to learn how to operate the helm if I'm looking for a new job soon. <laughs> okay, so who wishes to go with Erkin on the new runabout? I'll go. Okay. Helsing will go. Welcome aboard, Lieutenant Commander. Ah, I'm glad to be here. This is a, a nice one. Still has the new shuttle smell. I'm very impressed. Actually, maybe I'll send one of the uh, the new engineers over. Um, who's the uh, has a focus on small craft? Oh, that's a good idea. And who might one of those engineering people be? Who's he? Who's he? Who's he? Dion, a I believe a, a trill female. Okay. Yep. So Fashion will we'll, um, uh, tell tell Who's he to um. Go, go with them in case they run into any uh, engineering problems in, in the craft. <clears throat> All right. Don't forget Togi. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So the uh, um, this is the first time seeing the newly uh, re ah, the newly received runabout class. So I will qu quickly pull it up short to players, a.k.a. the stream. What we have is a the evolution to the... 
what we have is the evolution to the Danube class runabout, aka the Amazon class runabout. Sleek, shiny, and nicknamed the USS Wraith. So Erkin, I would like you to have a make a control plus con test, please. Difficulty okay. of two to navigate your way through this thick soup of a nebula. And the sh uh, runabout can assist with a engines plus con. Engines con. I will give her the, uh... prof the prophet's blessing. Use my small craft focus. Mm -hmm. And yeah, two successes. Nice. All right. What does the runabout do? Uh, just nothing. Quietly. Oh, oh, that. Oh, oh I see. Rolled zero there. Okay. Yeah, yeah you are successfully pilot, and the runabout departs the ship. You know, a little bit of resistance as you p punch your way through the soup of a nebula, but it's not difficult. Oh yeah, shields are up. Yeah, oh, yeah, I figured as much. <laughs> and we all melt. Uh, uh, so, what do you wish? So, what is the cap, or what is the purpose of the uh, runabout mission there, Captain or Commander? Oh, in terms of right now in the, here in the Vale? Yeah. Oh, I just wanted to prepare one just in case we needed one. Not necessarily. Oh, you weren't I launching. I apologize. I didn't. I, oh, wow. I didn't. I didn't. I wasn't planning to launch it. I just oh. wanted to prepare oh. it. If Whoops. Necessary. <laughs> okay. I guess we did. <laughs> well, it is prepared and. <laughs> oh, that was a, a computer <laughs> and, and program. Uh, and then, right? yes. <laughs> uh, okay. Right, I just well, that's, that's how I would have flown it. Okay. okay. Thank you. So, no, okay. actually, this was all part of all part of crew evaluations. Just really make sure how how fast you could do it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, okay. Since we're you said the two favorite words, crew evaluations. As the uh, Nighthawk pushes through the rest of the nebula, we will have crew evaluations with Mister Erkin. Oh no. <laughs> uh, we are in the ready room down here. Sorry, Captain, I'm stuck in the holodeck. Be with you in a moment. <laughs> there we go. <laughs> this is the first time Erkin's actually been Let in the room. Out. I completely apologize for that. When you were preparing the runabout, I thought you saw, you, you yourself like, oh, there's something you want to show us. Oh. Not that you wanted me to... <laughs> no, <laughs> no, <laughs> I, so did I. I just was letting it go, and I was like... I... Sorry. I don't know. Know. I'm like... <laughs> I'm DTF. I'm down to fly. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Jesus. Oh, or Jesus. Okay. <sighs> come in. Come in. Uh, Erkin tentative, like, tentatively steps into the room as he's never been in the ready room before. I, I'm, I'm, I'm out of character. I'm sorry. I can't do this. I find this way too funny. <laughs> I'm so sorry. <laughs> <laughs> oh, all right. I, I'm good. I like to pretend that was in character. Like, I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I can't do this. This is ridiculous. Why are you? Here? All right, we're good. We're back. We're back. Come in. Come in. Come in. So I'm looking over your file here, but I mean, tell me, how are you? Uh, how are you getting along right now? How's uh, preparing for the festivities on the show? Captain, I'm still a little confused as to why humans devote uh, one night to let a stranger invade their house and leave plastic trinkets behind for their children. <laughs> um, it seems a little weird, but then again, I am Bajoran, and we do worship the prophets, so like I can see it from both angles. Uh, as a, a, the general rundown on, on the ship is, this is an experience of a lifetime. I've been getting to fly. Starfleet's finest, work with Starfleet's finest, be part of an amazing yet classified mission, series of missions, detect new or make first contact with new life forms. Like this is everything that they taught me in the academy that we would be doing, I'm doing, and it's amazing. Well, that's a very rehearsed answer, Lieutenant, but I appreciate it nonetheless. There's like, a, like just a pride tear comes down as. <laughs> <laughs> In any case, how do you? How would you describe your fellow uh, relationship with the with the, with your fellow crew members? 
I am but just a lowly lieutenant in amongst the sea of lieutenant commanders and commanders. <clears throat> uh, but I feel that I'm respected. I feel that uh, if I give a suggestion that I'm, that I'm listened to and that I'm a trusted member of your senior staff. Well, I can definitely confirm that personally that I share all of those feelings in abundance. But it doesn't necessarily seem like everybody else here really feels that way. I mean, I'll let you know right now, since, I mean, it's not any members of the Nighthawks specifically, but after the incursion of the Typhons at Deep Space 15, I've gotten a lot of reports from Cerberus personnel that, well, for lack of a better term, aren't necessarily too fly-happy. Oh, are you talking about the particular incident? Uh, I, don't, I don't know what you're talking about. No, I don't either, sir. I think that they're just upset for no reason, you know, you know, regardless. I mean, it seems like with everything else that happens over there, they just want something to complain about. And if they can't find it on their station, they're going to try to find it on ours, or on our ship. Too true, sir. Too true. Uh, I find that the if, if the particular reports are based upon an incident in which I may have played a minor, a tiny, but just insignificant role, uh, it was the, in my opinion, sir, it was the uh, the space station's uh, lack of trying or exercising all their options. I would tend to agree. And I'm sure everybody else on this crew, if such a situation were to ever actually be encountered, would feel exactly the same way. As they should. As I would expect them to. Uh, a nervous laugh comes out of Erkin's lips that's quickly shut off. <laughs> 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 But on to uh, onto other matters. How about the uh, how about the rest of your flight crew? I mean, Jefferson's really coming to his own, don't you think? I am very proud of Jefferson's uh, Jefferson's uh, quick learning and quick study. Uh, I even hear he's bailed the the Nighthawk out of a couple of situations, which I'm very pleased, and I will be giving him my full Starfleet report or commendation when we reach Star uh, Federation space, sir. All right, well, good to hear. But you know, what if uh? You know, what if there was uh, something more that we could do for him? Like a promotion, sir? Well, I mean, I'm just thinking to myself that, you know, considering, like, you know, the great leaps that he's made in such a short amount of time, do you personally feel like, you know, serving here upon the Nighthawk, that he'll get, you know, he'll absolutely get all the growth he, that's necessary to him here? Do you feel like there's enough opportunities for the rest of the crew that's underneath you to, to be able to serve in their full capacity? Given given the wide range of missions we've been on for the last six months, sir, I I tend to lean towards that there is certainly ample opportunity for growth. Uh, however, if you feel that there's a better deployment for them, then I am certainly up for uh, certainly up for the discussion on the topic. But how about yourself, Lieutenant? Do you feel like there's ample opportunity for growth for yourself? He sort of he, he kind of pauses and he's count. He, you can tell he's counting in his head. It's like, uh, Captain, I do notice that there's a, uh, oh sorry, a permission to speak off the record, sir. Granted. Uh, you don't have a red-shirted lieutenant commander yet on your senior staff. And he kind of leaves that one hanging. Well, since we're speaking off the record, why do you think that is? Uh, well, I think that Commander Bashir makes a very fine first officer, and you're one of Starfleet's best captains. So but modest. I do try, sir. <laughs> uh, but I, I have not put any thought on the matter as to why there's a vacancy in the Lieutenant Commander uniform in red. Just pointing out what I'm perceiving, sir. So, regardless of which, with the, the nature of our mission is classified, and the very fact that we're in Starfleet Intelligence just makes things work a little bit different here. Do you believe that I need more necessary? I need more people in, with uh, traditional command experience on board this vessel. Well, sir, in the in the very unlikely and and uh, profits be profits be damned scenario in which you are injured and or and or removed from service due to the 
uh, the dreaded brain bug attack, for example. Um, you know, there, there should be someone with some command experience ready to take your lead. Uh, Commander Bashir and Helsing are both very capable officers, but I do question their commandability. Sorry, oh. command ability and oh. commandability. Two words and one word. Well, this is a very interesting development, and I will admit that it's not something that's, that I uh, thought of it at the at the time. But I also noticed that if this, is, how long have you been actually been feeling this way, off the record? Okay, uh, 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 <clears throat> uh, Captain, um, it is it has been my dream to move up in the ranks and to gain command experience ever since I was a wee farmer. <laughs> oh, wee <laughs> farmer! I'm sorry. <laughs> I wasn't aware we were going would... Scottish there <clears throat> or no, Irish. No, sorry, no, that's <clears throat> sorry, sir. That's just the uh, the potato farmer in me coming out. Do I have to make a presence command check to see how much brown nosing I'm getting? Right now? <laughs> if brown shirt was a uniform color in Starfleet, he might have one. <laughs> I do appreciate the, your thoughts and opinions. And you may even be right. But if such a thing actually were to happen, I'll decide it in my own free time. And when I deem it necessary. But I do appreciate the response. But don't forget, Erkin, you are a valuable member of my crew, and you are a valuable member of my senior staff. And if there's something more that you need, don't hesitate to tell Commander Bashir first. Yes, sir. Of course, sir. All right, then. Well, that's all I have to take care of with this situation. Unless there's anything else you need, you're free to go. Hi, sir. Stands up. Kind of, like, drunkenly shuffles his way out. Uh, and on that, we are going to quickly cut to the bridge. <laughs> Where Erkin shows up and kicks Jefferson out. And the captain's not on there. Okay. <clears throat> so, Erkin, um, it is about this time that the USS Nighthawk begins to pierce the outer veil, or the other side of the nebula. You, the, you do notice a significant drop in uh, engine performance as you do. Some sort, whether it's just the physical resistance of the nebula, or the, just or this uh, baryonic radiation that is beginning to slow the ship down? Not entirely certain at the moment, but you do manage to get through to the other side. Uh, just do an engine readout um, and double check it with the Shran's numbers. Okay. Um, then if both you and the Shran could roll, uh, you can roll Insight Con, and the Shran can roll Insight Engineering. Uh, difficulty of one each. Okay. And only the role that uh, beats the difficulty by the most will add to the momentum pool. Okay. Uh, insight con. Ooh, three successes from the Shran. Uh, I will use Helm Operations as the focus. Okay. Okay. Uh, you each will get three successes, so two momentum. <clears throat> Uh, so the ship, uh, it feels as if the, the ship has been fighting the wind for the last several days. And only now has bro the wind has died down and the ship has emerged the other side. The helm control begins to reactivate as, uh, or begins to action as it should. And the Shran is noticing a significant uh, amount of reserve power once again flowing back into the reserves. Oh, good. Just come out of. Uh, are we at the destin destination? Do we drop out of warp. Ah, you are at. So you can be. Well, summon the captain. Yep, yep. you can summon the captain if you wish. Approaching the destination, sir. 
Okay. So you are in. So in for those of you who have the Lasai Expanse map open on your own desktops, uh, you are in Sector Iota Dash Two, <clears throat> and you are at the very tippy top of um, Scorpi Space, the planet that has been noticed on their star charts as Mozonis. However, now that you're on the other side of the nebula, if Mr. Bashir could please roll a, um, a reason science, please. A uh, ship can assist with computers plus science. Uh, this will be a difficult at two. Okay, one from the Nighthawk. Ba -da -ba -ba -da -ba. All right, and that is two more successes. So, or four moment, four successes, two momentum. You are now capped. You might need it. Now that you're on the other side, it's well. You notice two things. One, holy cow, the tachyon emissions on this side of, in this sector of space are out of this world. Holy moly, it's dense. Um, <laughs> tachyon particles are. Um, faster than light particles that are typically generated when a ship jumps to warp, and that's a, and by very stellar phenomenon, and occasionally pieces of technology. Um, I'll give this to you because you guys have probably had enough time to s study the logs. The uh, Scorpi use a form of solar sail vessel, which is propelled by pointing a tachyon ge particle generator at the sails to make it uh, go faster than the speed of light. And that is most likely what you're seeing around here. Um, Long-range sensors pick up no less than 40 different small uh, sail craft sailing around. And the origin of the baryon particles that you're seeing is actually emanating from uh, the series of coordinates that would coincide with Arkenfall, a.k.a. the Scorpi homeworld. And you do have a question if you wish. We are cloaked, correct? And that's not my question, but that was my statement. Because <laughs> we, I mean, I'm sorry. We're using the. <laughs> well, I did request it before. Yeah. So I want to make sure, you know. I was going to say, that's why I was making sure. I think that was pretty much dated. Okay. Um. So. Is it like a giant traffic jam? I mean... I wouldn't say traffic that... jam. It's hard to have a traffic jam in space. Um, but um, the like, part... I, I, I guess like Coruscant. Um, <laughs> <laughs> like, I just say it because they said with the tachyon, uh, tachyon emissions all over this, it just seems like there's like a lot of traffic is what I'm saying. Well, that's only 40... That's only 40 sh ships that are generating the tachyon particles, and that's okay. over several systems of um, stars. Um, the reason you're able to detect it is because tachyon particle generators are loud AF on sensors. There's okay. No, there's no way to be stealthy with these things. Gotcha. Okay. All right. So, so um, like I said, that's what I got. <laughs> yeah. Orders, Commander. Dead in. As I said, I'd, I'd fly in. I think we should fly in stealthily into the thing so we can get as closer scans. <clears throat> yes, sir. Okay. So you're act you're activating the uh, silence this or the silent running. Yeah. Okay. It's been a while so I've actually read up on how that rule works. Let me double check. Mm 
Okay, so this is going to be a control plus engineering task. So either from uh, Mr. Helsing or from uh, the Shran. Uh, the yep. ship, ship can assist with computer security. Difficulty of two. I'll take the ship if you want to take the Shran. You take the uh, sensors. Sure. So, sensor science for the ship? Sure. Is it control plus engineering, right? Nope. I'm sorry, yes. Um, yep, control engineering, and then I believe it was sensors plus engineering? Uh, computer security. I'm sorry, I wasn't even close. Computer security for the ship. Well. Got one. One success from Thishran. What does the... Ship rolls. Ship makes it. So, Thishran, you notice a, a severe increase in... Um, or a, a, a significant decrease in the uh, active camouflage systems. Probably from residual radiation on the ship's hull. But regardless, you're able to push through it, and the ship is in active cloak. Or active camouflage. We almost lost our sneakiness a bit there, Captain, but I figured it out. Okay. Okay. So. Do you see any lasting harm from this uh, radiation on the active camouflage, or is it or just it'll go away after a while if we leave? Is that something we? Uh, I know. Um, yeah, that, uh, that could just... Yep, it's just a residual thing. It will dissipate in time. Yep, it'll be fine. Don't worry about it. Hey, good. <laughs> Thank you. It's not something to permanently damage it, is what... Confidence to the end. Okay, you have successfully made it to... So it will take another... So by the time you get to Arkenfall, I'm afraid it will be Christmas Day. So we will we will celebrate Christmas Day after first contact because that I think would be a far better thing. So you make it to the Arkenfall orbit. So cursory glance of the system. Uh, as soon as I scope or zoom out for stream here. <clears throat> So the Arkenfall system is, at first glance, a completely boring system. It has a class G, a yellow, a yellow star, uh, similar to our own. No gas giants, which is kind of odd. Uh, there is uh, five planets in the system. Uh, first one is class B, um, so similar to um, Venus. Uh, second is class E, known as a geoplastic, which is a planet that is currently cooling. Uh, class 3 is Class M, and we'll talk more about that shortly. Um, this, the fourth planet is Class H, a desert world. So it may have supported life, but it has a rapidly dissipating atmosphere. And Class 5 is a marginal world, or Class L marginal world, so barely habitable by humanoids. <clears throat> Um, as figured out, class the third planet is known as Arkenfall. It is primarily a jungle planet. Um, high levels of humidity, very thick atmosphere, uh, class M, so you know breathable by humanoids. Uh, the polar ice caps are fairly thin, and there appears to be a heavy greenhouse presence. Uh, it does have two moons encircling it. One is completely dead. The other one is barely ge geologically active. And there, you see several. You see several of these um, uh, small solar sail vessels. Many of them appear to just be floating under their own power, uh, or the, the power of the sun, I should say. Many of them don't have their own tachyon drives. And the whole thing is brimming with Scorpio life signs. On a tertiary scan, like how many? Um, tertiary scan of the pl uh, planet without a you know targeted sensor, you estimate there to be uh, roughly a billion Scorpio life signs on the planet. Okay. Yeah. 
What is odd is that there doesn't appear to be much in the way of orbital structures beyond the occasional uh, small communication satellite. Normally, a spacefaring uh, species would have, you know, shipyards in orbit, or at least some form of refueling stations. But there doesn't appear to be any of that on around Arkenfall. <clears throat> How about radio signals or comms ah. traffic? Uh, that would be sensors plus engineering, please. Uh, difficulty of, well, they're quite primitive, so difficulty of one. Anybody got that good? <laughs> if you have E-War or communications, that would be a good one. Ronnie, I think, has that if you need to. Yeah, someone could roll for Ronnie. I'm on it. <clears throat> what is it? Uh, um, sensors plus engineering. And the ship help? Yep, ship could assist with uh, communications plus engineering. And um, what was Ronnie rolling again? Um, ah, uh, insight plus engineering. Insight engineering. Yep. Uh, sensor operations? Uh, do you have communications by chance? No, just I'm... sensor operations. I'll let that go, but my recommendation would be that she take communications upon activation, because this is an activation, but activate her oh, however okay. you like. But yes. Ah. <clears throat> okay. Okay, she does it. So you would get one momentum, but you're already capped. Although, this would be a scene change, so you would have lost one momentum, but now you've gained it back, so yay. Okay. Ah! Nice. <clears throat> there is a significant amount of... Um, radio traffic bouncing between the planet's communication satellites and all the vessels. For the most part, it appears to be some form of mesh network, um, sort of a, um, let's see, how would I say it? Uh, it appears to be similar to weather reports. Um, uh, so they're all talking about how the sun's um, current, ac or current uh, emissions are allowing for the best currents in this in certain um, sectors of space. There's also a decent amount of intership traffic. Most of it seems friendly and jovial. Uh, between the planet and the barely active moon, there is a significant back and forth traffic between it and what appears to be a mining colony. And there does appear to be very uh, primitive subspace communications between Arkenfall and several of the other planets in this vicinity of space. Okay. Go on a jungle planet and listen to weather station. These are some creepy species. <laughs> well, when you rely on the uh, sun as a minor, I, as a primary true. form of transportation. Pro yeah. Bridget, yeah, I can see how that would be. A traffic report and weather report. Mm -hmm. Okay. <laughs> Well, do we broadcast a giant hello? Or... <sighs> well, could call the we can travel to the bridge. We okay. can travel around stealthily and uh, drop presents off each, each uh, household. Ah, yes! Good idea. <laughs> we will use the power of the humanoid god of Christmas. <sighs> uh, yeah. Um... I'm going to calm the captain and uh, let him know, like, we are here. We have gotten a ton of information and rely everything to him and uh, waiting to see how he wants to handle this content. But my paperwork. I guess I'm not too late. <laughs> we can make command decisions. You might, you might be pleased say, with that. I, 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 <laughs> <laughs> the giant broadcast. We, well, sir, we've come up with two options. One, we're just going to be, beam down and say hi, or we're going to go house to house and deliver presents. <laughs> the shrine's already replicating a Santa Claus elf. <laughs> option three is proton bomb, so really... <laughs> <laughs> Let's yeah. not declare war on the... War. <laughs> Romulan nuke? <sighs> yeah, Romulan nuke. <laughs> All right, listen up for these hot captain's orders. So, 
it's nice that we're here. Thank you for relying, relaying all this information. But my first order of concern, honestly, is to figure out where exactly the Draven got these Scorpi from. And now that we're here and there's a billion life signs on this main class M planet, then I want to look for evidence of uh, Draven interference. So if we could, regardless of, uh, if we could find any, if we could find any evidence of uh, previous uh, Draven signatures on any of these planets, I think that's the first place we should start. The Draven, I'm sorry, not the Draven, the Scorpi are centaur-like, so it doesn't necessarily seem like if we beam down there, we'd be easily able to cause yeah, a medically I, I don't think in. the cause, yeah, I was thinking that one too. Um, I mean, maybe two of you could wear a centaur suit, I, but that would be... That's what I was, yeah. All right, Helsing, you're so, the back half. I, I, so to the best of my well, knowledge, I... <laughs> You guys get to decide that amongst yourselves. No, but uh, I, I actually feel like in this scenario, uh, if we were to prepare an away team, I'd actually want Togi to go down to the surface. I mean, at least it's time for him to, you know, get off the ship every once in a while, and he's probably the most adept at trying to figure out exactly what's going on in their environment, probably a little bit more instinctively than the rest of our tricorder scans could ever get. Interesting idea. Yeah, I'm all for it. Either if we find evidence on the jungle planet, he is an obvious go go ahead. Other than that, though, um, if you don't find any other evidence of Draven activity right here on your cursory scans of these planets, making sure that you're not spotted, even though even though they may seem low tech, uh, you can never know. Just make sure to conduct your scans, make them high intensity but discreet. Try not to get caught, like uh, last time. <clears throat> Um, I do have a question. What, when was, where was the ancient technology that we wanted to investigate in their yeah. space? So, I mean, uh, I know the Draven kind so. of sidetracked that yep. plan, but at the same time, where was that at? So uh, that's the part you're not able to fi figure out. The ancient technology rumors stemmed from conversation that was relayed to, to you guys through Commander Area on board uh, Deep Space 15. There was a... Recently, there were peace talks being held between uh, two of the other um, the Psy Expanse races, known as the Nalu and the Kasala. And during those talks, there was there was mentioned that the um, Scorpi uh, had some sort of super weapon which prevented them from really having to deal with the Borg. The Scorpi had a super weapon. Yeah, that <laughs> area seemed very area seemed very skeptical of the information, but the um, Kasala ambassador stated it with enough force and certainty that she thought it was a lead that Starfleet intelligence should follow up on. Well, that sounds cool. Oh yeah. Okay. Yeah, just add it to your collection <laughs> of super weapons. Let's weapons. let's go. <laughs> well, you know, got to catch them all. Uh, okay. All right. So uh, let's do a sensor scan. For... Obviously, we got the tachyon up the waz. Mm -hmm. So how about we try to of the pirate ships? Okay. So you're looking for cloaking fields or engine or power signatures equal to that There's of the... A... Okay. Uh, this is going to be difficult. Uh, once again, sensor science, you know the drill by now. Uh, ship can assist with, sen with ah, sorry, insight science plus sensors science. Difficulty of two. Okay. Oh, interesting. Uh oh. That's a failure on the ship side. I said be discreet. Uh, is the ship <laughs> supposed to move like that? Uh, we have momentum. Yeah. I'm going to use momentum. Thank you very much. Well, okay. And use two to burn it. Yep. It, so that's down that. to four. Two to momentum go. to get rid of the... Um, uh, son of a... So fault, you, whatever that's called. Yeah. So you took uh, one momentum for an extra dice there, Bashir? Okay. Cool. Yeah. Okay. Um, you're... you're Actually, I'll take threat and let that succeed. 
Can mm-hmm. I assist him with an advisor so he can reroll one of those zeros? That could work. Remember, you have your evaluation on the line. <laughs> <laughs> Take a drink. Okay. Science. All right, so one more re-roll for you there, Bashir. On it. Awesome. Okay. <clears throat> okay, I will still let that succeed by taking threat. Yeah. Because I've given you guys a lot of momentum, so it's only fair I take some in return. <clears throat> So, good news, you're not seeing any sign of Draven, so there's no life signs, uh, no standard antimatter matter warp reactors that you've seen on their board their ships, and no sign of their cloaking devices. The only, the only thing being sneaky around this system is you. Um, there is, uh, there appears to be a very interesting energy signature coming from deep within one of the jungles of the planet. Um, near... It's relatively close to some of the uh, habitat, some of the cities that are located on planet. Um, it is. Uh, eh, I'm going to have to use my technical jargon because my voice or my brain is starting to go. Why is it going? I don't know. <clears throat> there we go. What you're seeing is a series of <clears throat> of a positronic part. Or, Positron particles that are emanating from a sector that is slightly north to the equator, uh, dense or in, located inside one of the more denser jungles of the region. As um, there are several Scorpi cities that are sort of equidistant to it, but the site itself appears to only have a minimal amount of life signs. Oh, can you repeat what signature that was? A po- uh, it is a positronic sort of signature. I see. Yeah. Uh, okay. Well, in any case, uh, it's the best. I still don't want to beam down to the main class M planet because that's just suicide. There's no way that we'll be able to prepare for that well enough. How densely populated? is the surrounding area of uh, the signal. Uh, so within about five kilometers of the si- of the signal, uh, you only see, a, or your sensors only detect roughly uh, 50 to 100 uh, Scorpi life signs and an indeterminate amount of other fauna. Uh, there are three cities um, located equidistant to each other and to the site itself, each containing uh, anywhere from 30,000 to 500,000 life signs all spread out fairly uh, not compactly like a metropolitan area just large sprawling civil civilizations is there a I want to phrase this I want to phrase this carefully Mm -hmm. you know what I I'm gonna take back that question okay Well, while people are figuring out what to do, I think it's a good time to take a bit of a bio break. <laughs> so, I will restart the countdown timer. Uh, we will be back in roughly 10 minutes, so if folks could be back at uh, 20 to the hour, that would be greatly appreciated. I will restart the countdown. And so, I will see everybody fairly shortly. Bye for now.
All right, welcome back, folks. It has been ten. It has been a b brief bio break, but let's see what plan our ingenious Starfleet intelligence officers have come up with. So, boys and girls, and the other intergendered species, we are going to do what we hopefully should be able to do best, which is surveillance. And we are going to beam down into the general planet below. But beforehand, I want us to make sure... Is there a, a specific clearing that's closer to the signal source? Uh, yes. That uh, we can beam down into? The signal source appears to actually be in its own clearing. Okay. Um, well, but beyond that oh. is dense jungle. I think what he's asking is there, how close is the nearest area near it that we can... Yeah. Uh, beam down to what he said <laughs> um it would be difficult but there's enough natural areas in the jungle that a talented transporter uh chief could find a place to beam you in relatively close okay um regardless maybe you're lumping this in with sensors but can we actually get um an actual terrestrial view of the jungle to in combination with our sensors to actually scan for not just life signs, but so we can track heat signatures and movements of the of the potential away team. I want to make sure exactly what uh what adversaries or creatures we're going to be encountering encountering if the if the jungle is going to be so dense. I want physical eyes. That makes sense. Starfleet um, Google Maps. <laughs> Let's see. Would such a thing be possible? I do not see why not. Uh, however, it would take almost all of the uh, sensors of the Nighthawk to do so. So you would not be able to keep, say, cursor passive sensors on the planet as a whole, and only a bare minimum to let you know for proximity sensors. Can't can't I just dedicate specific staff to this task? I suppose you could. Yeah, that makes sense. Instead of actually just putting the entire Nighthawk on it. <laughs> makes sense. Uh, yeah, choose an officer, and then that officer well... will keep an eye on things. Well, I suppose Rani has a sensor operation, so she'd probably be the best, or unless we have somebody else in mind for our, our advanced sensor suite. We haven't taken out the binars in a while. Nope, binars but, uh, are still a thing. I don't think they have any sensor capability. They have sensor operations. Oh, they do? They do. And we can pull them out again, and we can add to sensor operations. Good. Yeah, that's true. All right, so I'll go put one zero and one one on that test specifically in the advanced sensor suite on board the ship to monitor the away team. Okay. Um, I also when we beam down into that clearing, that's a little bit of, well, like Commander Bashir said, that's a little bit away from the actual um, sensor camp, whether mm -hmm. that's in deep jungle. I want to send uh, portable hollow emitters first. Uh, just to make sure that if we want to return to this beam inside, along with, along with portable transport, along with transport enhancers, I want to make sure that if somebody else is coming or walking through that jungle, it's just going to be look, it's going to it's going to look dense. It's going to, it's going to look like untraversable ter terrain. Uh, okay, that is that is doable. Uh, this is going to require a control plus security to set up the duck blind uh, properly. Um, one person can assist. I can take that. Okay, so we will beam the... So it's going to beam the generators down to the planet, then beam you guys down, and then uh, do the duck blind. Is that how this is going to work? Mm -hmm. Okay. Then and what's the difficulty? I'm just going to start thinking about that now. Uh, so this... Okay. Uh, let's see. So beaming the equipment down will be no problem. Um, beaming everyone else down in a suitable stealthy manner is going to be difficulty of three. Uh, control plus engineering from Chief Zell, uh, sensors engineering from the ship. Okay, I got the ship. Okay, um, and while we're figuring out rolling, who's actually going? So I'd like crew members, at the very least, that have had previous experience with the Scorpy. Okay. That's so not, that would be... You're not supposed to see that just yet. Yeah. See. Precisely. <laughs> okay. Uh... So I like 
just tell me when you're when you're ready. Yep. So I'm ready. Yep. All right, cool. So those would include uh, Loxley. Okay. Uh, she's, I mean, she bought them off. Uh, Rani. Not only does she have sensor operations, but I mean, you know, she has the Slurpee glaive, so she should go. She should go ahead and carry that with her. <laughs> and um, I still want to tell you down there, since we are moving into a jungle, and everything else is at the uh, at Commander's Bashir's discretion. Um, recommendation, uh, sir. If Ronnie brings the glaive down, do you think that might cause them to think that she killed a scorpion and it might take offense? I mean, that's certainly possible. What I was more so doing that for, if such a if such a thing were to happen and the away team were to be discovered, in that case actually you would be you'd be there to return it roger or it puts the fear of ronnie into him one or the <laughs> other i understand it's probably not necessarily the best look but if such a thing were to happen then we'll cross that bridge when we get to it but i do want to use this as a potential you know proper first contact scenario and in that case hey such a thing happened to us it's unfortunate we're not here we're here to give this back, not in like a declaration of like aggression. Okay. So I have uh, Ensign Rani, Loxley, and Togi. Um, who else wishes to come? Who did you want to lead? Did you want Rani to lead the mission, you said? I didn't tell her to lead. I think she should just be there. She should see his prior experience with the Scorpion. Oh, okay. I it's thought she said something. No, I mean it's up to you who you want to, who you want to actually lead the mission or who else you want to bring. Oh. I just feel right. like the I'll still go those down. people yeah. seem relevant. Sure. Okay. Um, I will still take uh, Helsing, me, and the doctor because me and the doctor have some knowledge of them, and Helsing and another security officer would be nice. Past that, that's getting a little. Okay, so I have Bashir, Helsing, Coox. Togi, Ibrel, and Rani? Sure. Cool. Okay. Um, who wants to take Rani? I'll take Rani. Okay. Um, who wants Ibrel and who wants Togi? Okay. We'll just roll them For Ibrel, I added, a, I added a value for Ibrel. Okay. Since she's being activated again. I can take Ibrel. All right. And that means that the captain gets Togi. Cool. <laughs> All right. So this would be his first activation, so you can do what you want to him. Is he wearing his tinsel hat with a star? Absolutely he is. It's now apparently part of his uniform. Okay. Okay, you beam down into a fairly dense jungle. Um, but, oh, um, actually, you don't beam yet because no one's rolled the uh, transported chief's roll. Sorry, I'm the ship got a success. Yep, ship got a success. Control engineering from Chief Zala. I'll go take care of her. Okay. You did such a wonderful job last time. She was beaming everything. <laughs> okay. Fun. Okay. Oh. Does it count as an activation for? Her? Uh, yeah, it would. We also have momentum. Yeah, you do have momentum. Um, Which we should use. I think she should use... Or does she have a value yet? You could... No, you... she doesn't. Okay. Because the transporter is going to sputter, and, and she's going to say, I'm sorry, sir, but the, tr the transporter system is yet to recover from its time in the nebula. It could take some time before we get it fully re repaired. Well, if we can't use the ship transporters, then why don't we just use the transporters on board the shuttle? Any of our shuttlecraft instead. Very well. It's been all the time dressing up that shuttle. Yes, you did. Why not shut? The <laughs> transporter fat is just filled with, uh, you know, tinsel and Christmas lights. It's, it's festive. It's red and green. Uh, the... Uh... Type XX shuttle's transporter pad has been decorated to look like a chimney. 
See, Tishran, Commander, I told you we wanted it to look nice in case I got called out on a mission. <laughs> and look at that. And look at that. Uh, just for the sake of argument. So are you just going to keep the shuttle on board the ship? Well, we can't use it stealth while moving. Correct. Correct. So, yes. We don't have a choice. Okay. Not while we do, but it's just not a good... <laughs> okay, Um. so... First down. Who is going to be the first down on the planet? Oh, I will. I will. Okay, fine. You. Okay. Go Security. <laughs> I gotta make it yes. look good for the captain. Thank you. Okay, that's how this is going to play out. Cool. You can. You can cover my little. Okay, so what my is job. going to? So first down on the planet is going to be Mr. Helsing. So, Mr. Helsing, you beam down with the necessary hollow generator field, and this is sort of what you see. Uh, through the dense uh, jungle forest, uh, you see a fairly large clearing. Um, outside, um, yeah, within um, about 200, 300 meters in, di in a radius. And at the middle of this stands a green obelisk that is roughly five to about, let's see, one, two, three, four, five, six, about ten stories. It's about seven stories tall, so it's about uh, 70 meters or so. No, that's not right. Yeah, seven stories tall, 70 feet tall, I should say, with a base of a roughly... I had this written down and then I deleted my notes because I'm a bad GM. It has a it has a base of roughly a hundred meters. No, sorry, a hundred feet. So it's pretty big around the center, and then it goes up to a fairly high point. Um, there are several uh, scorpi that are scuttering around its base, and I shall put their tokens out momentarily. Uh, while you're doing that, if I can, or while I'm doing that, I, can I ask you to roll a uh, control plus security task to set up the duck blind. This is going to be a difficulty of uh, difficulty of two, and if you have you know infiltration Murdered. or something oh, like that, oh yes I do. That would work well here. And I'm going to use a momentum, so Mr. Erkin, if oh, yes. you would. Yep. This is a scene change too, so you are down one momentum automatically. Down two, right? Uh, yep, yeah, that's right. Okay. Uh, where the heck did I put their tokens? I had all their tokens uploaded, and now I don't can't find them. Oh, that's why. Okay, so that is three success. So you get uh, one momentum back, and your duck blind is set up fairly well. To the uninitiated. And those who don't know the forest, like the back of their hand or pincer, this is a impassable portion of terrain. All right, what you see here are the following. Uh, one, two, and there is a third. Oh, God, my steampunk nightmare come to life. <laughs> okay, so you see, uh, in the main clearing around the structure, you see three scorpi. Um, they are of differing skin tones. Um, two of them are f um, darker in skin tone. The third is lighter. Uh, where they v differ quite variably is their s the color of their chitin. Um, there are uh, the two males. Um, the fair skin one has a dark blue... Uh, chitin armor. The, the, uh, dark, the dark skinned male is a fairly uh, pink fuchsia, which stands out very, very brightly against the otherwise green terrain. And the dark skinned female has a white chitin. Um, so, um, that is your tactical assessment of the field. Most of them seem to be paying almost reverential attention to the pylon. Does are, are any of the Scorpi amongst themselves showing 
differential treatment or being more wary around any of the others. Okay, uh, that would be an insight plus command test, or possibly insight security. Um, and if you have people reading or something along those lines, group dynamics, those would be good focuses here. No, uh, difficult, no focus. Uh, difficulty of two. So you said control security? Mm-hmm. How many momentum do we still have? I believe you have two. Yep. I'm not going to go for it. We'll see how this goes. That's one success, but not quite enough, I'm afraid. It's difficult to tell. There's a lot of... Um, um, muffled ch muffled talking between all three of them at any given point and their scuttering and skittering is makes di difficult for you to tell if any one of them appears to be in charge all right so togi is going to start after you set up the duck blind he's going to start aimlessly starting to walk towards the outskirts of it Similarly, like he's going to start walking outside. Okay. Togi. Come buddy. <laughs> he looks back at you, semi-rebellious, hey. and he's putting his hand up to where, where the edge of this duck blind is. Togi. You realize Togi can speak. Captain right? won't be happy. Oh, yeah, no, I, I'm super aware. <laughs> Come on, buddy. I think we can play a trick on uh, on Thrasher, Thrasher and Bashir. Been getting really good at it lately. Need you to help me plan for one. How much longer do you have to plan, Lieutenant Commander? For the trick? For the trick. You always use some help. Because you pulled some good ones on me. Word around the ship is you don't have that long. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's kind of what I've been hearing. Oh. <sighs> oh. Okay. Next on the planet is going to be Commander <coughs> Bashir and Lieutenant Loxley. So transporters re rematerialize and bring them down. There's a small um, fluttering of birds as the additional members begin to take up space in the forest, but it doesn't seem to the it doesn't or the three individuals do not appear to notice. Hey, uh, uh, Commander? Yes? You might want to have a word with Togi. Togi. <laughs> What's going on? Hey? <laughs> That's kind of the word I was getting. I was getting, too. It's kind of close to the edge of the blind. It's okay. This is his natural environment. Togi, go scout. Well, at this point, I'd love to scout. Oh, okay. sure. God, no. How is <laughs> I Togi... reach out just as he goes out. Crap. And how is Togi going to scout? <laughs> well, I won't actually go outside the duck blind. Is there any way that I have the ability to... Is is the Togolau's, is the Togolau's sense of garden a similar, similar to be, like, similar, like, empathic in a way? Can I... Put my, can I put my hand in the ground and actually start, like, you know, feeling the fauna? Um, afraid not. It is, uh, the sense of garden is only within other Togolau organisms, so to speak. Um, what Togi could do is begin to replicate itself or spread itself thin and, you know, cast a net that way. And sort of, you know, one spore uh, linked to another, linked to another, linked to another. Mostly invisible to everyone else, but to Togi, it's just like a very, very long index finger. 
All right. Well, I can also change shape. So I'm can I go ahead and release some of my spores? Sure. And I'll also shrink down at least enough so I could hide myself within the grass and okay. then move on out. That's uh, what I was Could very you? smart. Okay, so next question is, would Togi have been equipped with a communicator badge slash universal translator? I'd assume so. Okay. For, you know, I, standard. Yeah. Uh, makes sense. Okay. That's up to the commander, though. I mean, yeah, I was going to say, he's had to have been spent enough time with to have the universal translator. Oh, probably. Uh, obviously. Um, uh, but, yeah, I was going to say, I, I would assume especially on an away mission, which he's now gone on a couple, you would have community. Makes sense. Okay, so um, Locke, or uh, uh, Commander, Co or Dr. Coax and uh, Ensign Rani land on the planet just as uh, Togi decides to shrink down and disperse a bit. Um, so if Togi could please roll me a... Let's do fitness plus security... And I will give I will give you an advantage just because you've already changed shape. So you can count that as if you have a focus. All right then. Uh, this will be a difficulty of one, just because they're not really paying much attention right now. And that's just one degree of success. So you make it. <clears throat> uh, you spread yourself pretty thin. And begin to move out throughout the tall or the waving fields of grass. As you get closer, the sounds of um, conversation begin to coalesce into something that your universal translator can describe and translate to however you deal with language. It appears that the individual with the the dark skinned individual with the uh, top hat and the and the goggles appears to be the one in charge. Uh, he is wearing a um, fairly dapper outfit of I uh, think sort of steampunkish style. So a long cloak that's draped over the back of his carapace, uh, long coattails that almost draped draped to the ground, and he's carrying a fairly uh, thick pad full of well worn and read through notes. As he begin, uh, he is barking, well, not barking, uh, he is speaking slowly and methodically to the structure as he's reading it and begins to manipulate dials that, dials and other, um, other interface, um, other interface uh, buttons that have uh, materialized out of the base of the structure. Now, Jack, now, Jakaras. Be prepared. We are, we we are going to try this once again. We must shut down the moat. It has long served its purpose, and is only beginning to harm our society. Catherine, if you could please begin speaking the the uh, the sacred rites, and hope that they will hear our pleas once more. Both um, at this, and in unison, they both write. Uh, they both respond. Yes, Pastor Virilian. And at this point, you know now who they are. So I will somehow figure out how to make their names visible to you guys. I will figure that out one day. <clears throat> in any case, yep. while they're speaking, I'm still going to be. Uh... I'm just, my combat is still going to be, you know, relaying this since I'm in the vicinity to be able to hear them to the rest of the away team. Very well. And what does the rest of the away team do at the moment? <clears throat> well, <clears throat> the co-ox would probably be, um, if I finally beam down um, and I kind of see what everybody's kind of in a hushed manner, kind of moving towards the edge of the brush, uh, if I could see what what, uh, what took place there, um, I would definitely be interested in, in uh, kind of getting a scan on um, the physiology of difference between what we had before and these alive Scorpi. Um, 
that would be about his. Okay. <laughs> That'd be about him. Uh, so the, it appears whatever ritual they are attempting lasts for roughly ten minutes. With uh, Virilian going around the base of the structure manipulating uh, control panels that appear for him to enter, and then as soon as he moves on, they sort of um, sort of meld right back into the base of the structure. Uh, Jakars and Kathrice, uh move around in more of a reverential... What's the phrase I'm looking for? Mm, sort of praying, a ritualistic speaking patterns, trying to shout out commands at the right time. There is a faint glow from the base of the structure, but after that, the whole thing sort of dampens again, gets muted, and Virilian lets out a small shriek of um, frustration. Go ahead and use the uh, Rani will pull out her tricorder and sort of scan the area for like communication signals or radiation waves or okay. anything like that to see if that was emitting a signal of some sort. Okay, this will be uh, insight plus engineering. Uh, difficulty of two. And if anyone wishes to assist and learn more, they can do so with uh, either insight science or even insight medicine. Only one other person can assist, though. Uh, I'd be down for insight uh, medicine. All right. Uh, use gadgetry as a focus? I'll let that happen, yes. Oh, right, Ranny. All right, two successes. Two successes from Ranny? Anything and then coming xenobiology? From... Uh, xenobiology would work, yes. Okay. <laughs> two successes from Co-Walk, so four momentum. Nice. <clears throat> Ranny, what you're noticing is that there is... That this structure actually heads... Or actually extends deep beneath the... Uh, the planetary surface. Mm-hmm. Um, and what is more interesting, and you weren't able to detect this from the ship for whatever reason, there is a significant amount of dilithium on this planet. Like, a lot of it. Ooh. Um, uh, however, a significant amount of it appears to be cracked and therefore rendered useless. Especially around this area. I'll show my tricorder readings to the commander. <laughs> but not saying anything, so I don't want to be heard. Yeah. Um, sure. Mr. Coox, what you're noticing about this is um, as the spe- as the Scorpi um, touch the console uh, or the base of the panel, it appears to interact with their genetic... It appears to activate only when it touches their genetic structure. Fascinating. So it's genetically coded to various... Um, markers in their in their DNA structure. So the second he releases from the panel, it locks itself out again. Okay. Uh, I would definitely, you know, tell him back. It definitely is the DNA markers. So this thing is coded for their species. And that's how they're activating it. Out of curiosity, does anybody happen to have uh, history as a focus? Or I have something? archaeology. That would work in this instance. Could you please roll me? Yeah, so anyone with archaeology, history, or something like that, um, please roll me. Insight plus science in this case. Now, this is going to be difficulty of two. We have quite a bit of momentum, so mm-hmm. could sure. I is okay. Uh, you get one momentum from that. No, oops. <laughs> Very cool. Uh, let's see. Where was this part of the? Yeah. So about this. So. You recognize this obelisk, though it's taken you a few minutes for it for your mind to remember where you've seen it from. This is a preserver obelisk. First encountered by the USS Enterprise 
back on Stardate something or other because I have lost that article for myself. When the USS Enterprise encountered a lost or a tribe of Aboriginal North Americans that whose culture had been saved by the preservers for whatever reason. Oh. Okay. All right. <clears throat> okay. Ancient technology. Three. Uh, All right. Lieutenant Commander, do we have, uh, do we have any other life signs in the area? Have we scanned? Uh, you haven't done a full. Sc uh, you haven't done a scan of the area for, you know, other life signs, etc. Okay. What you looking for? Just overall, like, is there... I mean, I'm just curious on who else besides these three. Okay. Uh, so that would be Insight plus Medicine or Insight Science for scanning for life forms. Those itty bitty life forms. Life forms. <laughs> uh, yep, difficult. Ooh. Okay, so that is a complication. Deficient. That would be a giant no. <laughs> we we still have a lot of momentum. Do you do we want yep. to get rid of that complication? Burn it. Oh. Burn it. Okay, so that takes two. <laughs> it does. Yes. Okay. Okay. There is a momentary panic as one of the duck blinds um, falls over. However, it's quickly righted again before anything out of the ordinary seems to happen, much to the GM's chagrin. Uh, you are detecting that there is another 10 life or 10 uh, Scorpi life forms that are taken up position more or less equidistant to the um, obelisk, that, and they are just sort of staking out areas just beyond the uh, what's the uh, just beyond the tree line. Um, there's several uh, carts and small automobiles that appear to be uh, traveling along various roads, but none of them seem to be approaching this far down, this far or this far along at this time. Okay. <sighs> yeah. yeah uh, you see. Um, uh, as your guys are figuring this out, uh, Virilian uses one of his um, large claws just to smack the pile, the uh, obelisk. <sighs> Mutters, yeah, we shall try again tomorrow. Come along. And then he begins to walk along the road, or walk back to the tree line to follow one of the roads back to the city. With his other friends in tow. Commander, you said that these things were a preserver obelisk. What were they used for? They transported alien races to other planets. It's an ancient power race we don't know anything about. I was just trying to figure out what they're trying to do by activating it. It seems coded to them. So. Well, it's obviously connected to their genomes and their genetic race. So I'm assuming that their people are the one that have to activate it. And from what we picked up from Togi, uh, it sounds like I have a feeling that they're trying to shut off the radiation. And Is that anything we can do? Not without their help. And as they're starting to leave out, I'm going to walk out of the woods and yell at them. Okay. 
Okay. Good blind Paul. <laughs> right. Okay. Uh, what in particular? Uh, um, so describe very carefully what your gestures might be and what you say, please. I walk out of the woods with my arms up, and, and I just call out, and I was like, "Wait." <laughs> So all three immediately take uh, several skitters back. Uh, they crouch down low on their um, insectoid legs, and they all three raise their tails um, ex uh, defensively. Uh, you notice that uh, Cathrice, the dark-skinned woman, is her venom uh, or her her stinger appears to be fully intact as it's dripping just. A little drip here and there of some sort of uh, thick, viscous green liquid. Um, Jakaris, his tail is uh, on his on his tail is a old style lantern hanging from a hook. And Virilin, oh. uh, Virilin, the leader of the bunch, doesn't or appears to have had his stinger removed, but nothing put or nothing has been um, repl or nothing has replaced it. Um, Cathrice quickly pulls out what appears to be a fairly um, a primitive style long rifle that has been slung across her back. Can I feel their intentions? Uh, sure. <laughs> uh, this is going to be. I a... think I can feel their intentions. <laughs> I can see their intentions. Left the, the captain on the ship certainly can, as he's um, his blood has just all of a sudden curdled, and he's not entirely sure why. Anyways, um, you can... No, no he's, sure, he's sure why. He knows why. He knows why. He knows why, but... Not again. So, <laughs> jokes aside, yep. jokes aside, jo I meant, like, if I can feel that they're, um, they're oh, that's, very... Uh, that's right, you anxious. can just Right, so if, um, they're, if they're getting, like, uh, not hostile, that's not a feeling. Um, yeah. Very wearing, or, or however they're reacting negatively, I'm going to walk up with Commander... And okay. I'm going to attempt to assist with the, 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 the motions of, no, nothing. We're not doing anything with my hands up, okay. outstretched, um, palms open. Okay. Um, so this is going to be a, let's see. Um, this will be a presence plus command. And if you have, you know, people reading or empathy or something like that, that would be a good focus. Uh, persuasion? Eh, I'll let that go, sure. All right. And difficulty was. Uh, this will be a difficulty of two. Two. Okay. Yeah. Uh, I'd like to spend one momentum just to assure. Okay. And then we're letting persuasion. Okay. Okay. Hey. That is three degree success. That works. <clears throat> and so it's more like just kind of like whoa 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 calm down you know like hands outstretched everything's open. We're not. We don't, we don't have weapons. So there is a significant amount of surprise um, from both uh, Virilin and Jakaras. You get um, sort of cautious curiosity, and Cathrice is pretty much defensive hostility at the moment. Even though she's not pointing the gun anywhere, she hopes that she can. Oh <laughs> don't worry, we got one of those too. <laughs> yeah, I think Loxy is matching that. Oh, I, I'm sure Helsing is Chase. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Wait. <laughs> Doing the Putin walk. Uh, Virilin uh, <laughs> takes a couple steps forward while just raising a hand to Cathrice. Easy, sister. They may be they may, they may be aliens, but they have not sh they have not shot at us yet. Tell me, blue one. Of what species are you? I am Commander Bashir of the United Federation of Planets. I am Andorian. I and my crew come in peace. I am fascinated by this marker. I have seen something similar myself in our history. He, uh, he raises an eyebrow, but lets you continue speaking. We are explorers, and we have come here looking 
ways to. <laughs> <laughs> Do not read the Sorry. Discord chat while you know yes. doing important speeches. Sorry, yeah, I shouldn't shouldn't have not hit that. Um, I apologize. All right, I'll turn that. Off. All right. <clears throat> we are explorers, and we also are interested in this object and, and this area of space, and. I think whatever you're trying to do, we might be able to be of assistance. He looks back at the at his entourage. Um, if I commend, if uh, Ibrel and Helsing could please roll me um, insight plus security, please. Um, and if you have anything like. Um, uh, infiltration or noticing your surroundings, that sort of thing, would be a good focus. Because this will be a difficulty. Infiltration, yep. I do. That should do. Uh, this will be a difficulty of two. Uh, I guess this is not really internal security, right? Well, that's. Uh, no. Uh, internal security? Mm, probably not, no. Oh my. There we go. Um, Loxley outdid me again. Well, Loxley should have only rolled one dice, so I. Oh, whoops, sorry. That's okay. Uh, so only one extra from that, so one point of momentum. Okay. Uh, Helsing and Abrel, uh, after quickly determining that the initial entourage are not a pff, immediate threat, you quickly turn your eyes to the surroundings and have noticed that 10. Other uh, Scorpi have emerged from the tree line. Uh, they're carrying fairly long. Uh, they're either carrying long rifles or uh, uh, pistols of some sort or another. But they're keeping their distance at the moment, and they don't have their weapons trained on you yet. So, um, on the ship, since I still have the binaries monitoring this, would I be informed of this? Ah, uh, yes. You would definitely rapidly. be informed of this. Okay, then. Just let me know if I get a chance to interfere or not. Commander, we have uh, more friends coming in from the outside. <laughs> I'm not, I, I, I can't right now. I'm not going to move my hands down. <laughs> so, okay, so I, I have to ask. So, since I am informed... And I see these additional Scorpi coming out. Mm -hmm. To the Nighthawk's knowledge, are these the only ones that are in the area that actually have like specific eyes on them? If we're going to count this group in total, yeah. would we say it's about maybe like 12 or 13? Uh, there would be 13 Scorpi signatures in this area. There's a few other roving groups that are tip that are traveling along the roadways, but at the moment, these are the only ones that are making any sort of organized response to your crewman's... Um, contact okay well I'd I'd actually like to prepare a probe to change atmospheric conditions but I don't want to launch it interesting okay something that would probably darken the skies cause maybe some wind gusts some rain but has long, but doesn't interfere with sensors long enough for me to lose track of the Scorpi signatures here. But I want to make sure more don't show up. Oh, an, inter an uh, uh, interesting. Okay. Um, for the sake of it, I will just say that you have enough people on board that this could take some time. This will be ready, but it will be about ten minutes or so. Well, that's fine. Then I'm just hoping that the away team can actually keep this uh, problem contained. Fair enough. Let's see what happens. I also want transporter locks on them. Uh, uh, it's been a scene, <gasps> so... Uh, Crewman Zell reports that she believes that the transporter system is once again functioning as it should. Not just on the away team, but I want them on Scorpy signatures as well. She just mutters yes, sir, and goes back to work. Okay, back on the planet. Oh. Okay. 
Oh, sorry. When is... you sorry, I cut out. Is everyone? A... Can everyone hear me? Yes. Roger that. Yes. Okay. Sorry. Uh, let's restart. What What's going on on the planet side? Um, the you had them roll, and we were having a little conversation. Fair enough. <laughs> okay. Uh, Virilin takes another couple steps forward, and raise. Raise, uh, takes a hand to his hat, raises it slightly, puts it back on. Say, then it pleases me to be the first of the Scorpi to make contact. You're obviously not here to enslave us outright, which is better than some. And you're not here to destroy us, otherwise you probably would have already. I bid you welcome. I appreciate that. What are you trying to do with this obelisk? We are attempting to deactivate the moat. The radiation field that's circling this sector of space? He nods quite vigorously. Yes, yes, the cybernetic ones triggered it many years ago. And we have been... We have been informed through the occasional passerby that the cybernetic ones are no longer present. We don't believe that there is any need to have the moat operational anymore. However, following the ancient doctrines does not appear to be working any further. We are at a bit of a loss. I see. The Borg are gone. The Borg have what as far as Starfleet and the Federation know, the Borg have been destroyed. Um, he we... claps his hands gleefully. Splendid news. Absolutely splendid. Sorry, I... I I don't have a lot of information on these obelisks as quite, but I will tell you, we have been watching for a good few minutes, and I'll tell you the ritual that you were doing when you would touch it, it would activate it. It's somehow honed to your DNA structure. Yes. Correct, Doctor? Yes. He nods. This is known to us. We, While our technology may not be as advanced as yours, we are certainly aware of the fundamentals. Our genetic codes are somehow keyed to this structure, and the people who left us here uh, generations ago they left us just with uh, str with scriptures and text to act to use it to protect our species from any external threats however now that we've turned it on we find that we cannot turn it off any further it's no I longer ex i'm sorry go ahead no no please please doctor so um you know the the right that you have been using that no longer functions it, it's no longer accepting it this is correct this is correct pale pale skinned one uh, you can call me Kowax. we're ah. we're all friends here there's no need to uh stand on ceremony please we want to help you mm. um how many um is there any particular time when it stopped working or is this just recently that you were uh, attempting to turn this uh, obelisk off the Scorpi history has us running this, running them, or activating the moat several times over the last several thousand of our solar cycles. Each time we were able to activate it and deactivate it according to the scriptures. However, now the scriptures, we follow the scriptures precisely as my ancestors have, and he seems to take quite, or he seems to take pride in that speaking that in of his ancestors. They're not spe he doesn't seem to be speaking of the species. He's talking about his forebears. I see. Um, perhaps there's nothing wrong with the with the the ceremony. Perhaps something happened to the obelisk where it's no longer working. Maybe it's broken. Perhaps. Um, would you allow us to help you in this ceremony? There is a wash of um, defensiveness uh, emanating oh. from Catrice. And now you're prepared, now that you see them, several of the 
temple guards. You must forgive us, str you must forgive us, though you come bearing the banner of friendship. This is the most sacred artifact to our people. <coughs> we cannot allow others to touch it, not without thoroughly vetting them in the process. May we see the scriptures? Of course. Well, we can take you back to our to our uh, temple city. We would be honored. And, like, basically I'll call out, like, the rest of my people, Togi, to reform and just be cool. <laughs> just... <laughs> And I want to keep a, a lookout, uh, not a lookout, but a, uh, a feeler out for anybody who's feeling particularly hostile and just kind of, and, and I want to kind of point it out if somebody's getting really, really, really antsy, I want to calm them back down. Okay. Besides Helsing. Besides <laughs> <laughs> Nobody likes me. <laughs> um, before we, uh, we, we go with you to the city, can I take a moment? I need to contact one of our friends. Of course. I'm saying that to Virilin. Okay. I'd like to step uh, a little bit away from the group and uh, to those that are coming out through the bush, perhaps to uh, Helsing um, and uh, everyone. <clears throat> Do you? Uh, this has uh, gotten uh, escalated quite quickly. Um, perhaps we need to do a quick uh, uh, chat with uh, the captain on the ship and see how he wants to handle this. Yeah, it would be a good idea, sir. All right. Um, I guess that's me. Unless some, who else is who is actually in charge of the away mission? That would be that commander. would be me. But I'm I'm kind of busy right now, so please do do what oh, okay. you feel. All right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Please. Okay. Um, so, <laughs> uh, Commander Coax to the uh, Nighthawk. This is the captain, and I, you better give me one good explanation right now. Uh, things have gotten interesting down here. Um, is is all I can say at the moment. Things are calmed down. We're we're not uh, we're not at blows. Um, we were watching a rite of some kind with these with this obelisk. Uh, we are attempting to negotiate to help them with it now, and they want to take us to um, their scriptures. Their I guess their leader. Th thank you. Uh, go go to their leader. Um, we do a. I'm calling up to just kind of see it under advisement. Uh, how do you want us to proceed, Captain? Is the away team in danger? Not currently. Um, there are many hostiles here. That are, there are those with um, that could be uh, combatants, but at the moment, I uh, I don't think uh, it has come to blows yet, or that we're in immediate danger. Uh, right, we got about ten to fifteen um, other Scorpi just on the outskirts. Paying attention to us, but as uh, Dr. Kowak said, nothing hostile yet. All right. So I need to be con out of character. I want to be convinced right now that the whatever the awaiting is planning down there is the proper course of action. So I don't know if that would require a role on either Kowak's or my part, but right now I'm not necessarily inclined to agree. But I'm free to. I kind of want to play this out in terms yeah. of like you know like a like a battle sort yeah. of you know like a social conflict. Okay, social conflict. Okay, which I believe is opposed presence plus command. I believe is the primary form of social conflict. I've okay. never actually run one. I've always just RP'd it. But yeah, um, yeah. Well, so we can RP it. That's fine. I'm just saying if you how I wanted to bring it up because however you wanted to do it, so. Oh no, this is between players, so you guys figure it out. Well, um, I'm not I'm not pushing one way or the other. That's actually why I uh, contacted you. I want to know what your thoughts on the matter of and what your direction is. Okay, then. Commander Kershaw, the commander's um, engaged with the uh, Scorpi that are currently at our location. So... Are the Scorpi right now able to overhear this conversation that you're having with me? No. I'm, I stepped the bottom looks are hearing is super, super good. To your knowledge, Doctor, are they? Is, uh, there, is their hearing that good? No. There's been no <laughs> indication to see that any of their hearing is beyond normal human levels. Oh, I need to make sure because this is a colossal mess up right now. So, 
Any okay. case, Doctor, if I were to beam all the Scorpi to the ship and put them into stasis, do you think you would have the ability to erase the memory engrams? That's a good question. Um, oh, GM, boy. what do you think? If, do, if of their my knowledge of their biology, mm -hmm. am I that advanced that I I might have a chance at that? Most of their primary thoughts, um, including memory and sensory perception and stuff like that, occurs in their humanoid brain. And based on what little you've seen, their humanoid brain does appear to follow traditional humanoid uh, biology. So, you know, it might be a little fly, fly by the seat of your pants, but you think you can figure it out, given enough sedative and time. Okay, sure, so... I advise against it. Because we have others on the outskirt, unless we beam everybody in an ever-growing circle out that would be observing it. That is my plan. Be ineffective. That is my plan, Lieutenant Commander. I plan to actually beam every Scorpion up here, put them into stasis until you can figure out how to erase their memories, and right now cause a plan, and right now cover this mistake with a planetary atmospheric condition in this area. We can beam them back out after we de after we determine that the storm or whatever we decide is subsided. No, uh, they were lost. Oh boy. There's a possibility, sir. If we could get, they've been touching this obelisk and- The Borg weapon. The Exo, the Exo said it was some sort of transporter as well. If we could time a, a transit of just us and the three that are with us, at the instant they touch it and it flashes like it did before and transport everybody up at that point, it might buy you some time. Hmm. I'm here to minimize the damage that has already been caused. If you need to say that is necessary, that you use Scorpy to continue interacting with the obelisk, then we can talk about that at a later time. However, I won't disengage Commander Bashir with whatever negotiations that he's going on right now, but it is my primary concern to contain this. Oh, I understand that. Um, I should mention that at this point, um, a quick glance over to the uh, Scorpi individuals. Uh, you notice that um, Jakara has pulled out a fairly lar uh, bulky communicator device and is speaking to someone. I, w I would also assume that, right, well, if that's the case, and I, I have no knowledge of that on the Nighthawk. Yep. I mean, do I or do I not? You don't, but... Do I notice it? Oh, yeah. It's, you know, it's like pulling out the old uh, flip-style communicators from TOS era. Some one of the... Uh, would be nice. Yep. One of the, sir, jam all communications in this area. One of the Scorpions is getting on a communicator. Uh, I will attempt to jam their, jam their, jam their transmission. Okay, are you jam? <laughs> okay, uh, uh, this is going. This is how this is going. <laughs> I just received an order. So. Yeah, you did indeed. Okay, so uh, Miss Mister Ranny could do a signals jamming, which I believe is. Ranny's on the surface. Yep. Yep. <clears throat> okay, so you pull out your tricorder and attempt to do signals jamming, which I am. You get to set the difficulty of one, two, or three. And then you have to meet or beat the that difficulty. Uh, uh, what's the what's the check? I believe is, um, I believe it's control plus engineering. And if you have anything like e warfare or signal jamming or you know focuses like that, that would work here. Uh, mining equipment. No. <laughs> <laughs> that would run me here. It's. It's data oh, mi data mining. Yeah. Uh, See, and Erkin had animal handling, and it was perfect. Uh, uh, I would like to choose a difficulty of two and okay. use, an, use a momentum. Very well. Okay. Oh, she does get to add another focus. We, do we yeah. want to pick communications? Oh. And that could maybe be a focus for here. I like that someone wrote, do we add communications as a focus? Onto the yeah. That was me. <laughs> I'll okay. fix it. Okay, so if you have communications it, as a focus, yes, then that will work. <laughs> Alright, communications. Oh boy. Engineering. 3D20 with applicable focus. Come on, baby. Yes. Wow, okay, that is one or three degrees success, so one momentum. So he needs to beat two. 
So he has a D difficulty of two if he wants to get out. And um, he doesn't have a focus in communication, so he does not. Uh, he t attempts to... He, ah, he pushes the button a few times to activate a comm signal. Waves it around. Skitters trying to find a good signal holding it up and just looks back and says, I'm sorry, uh, Averillion, this dang gas phone here is dead. Um, do you think it could be because we're so close to the obelisk? Averillion just mutters and shrugs his shoulders. Eh. It's one of those things the new techies are trying to get out and about, trying to replace the old landline communications. Can't say um... I've been a fan of them, but... Yeah, they work sometimes. All right. So in other words, signals are successfully jammed. Well, what's the status of my uh, my my atmospheric probe that I'm going to use to cause a storm here? So it's been about ten minutes. So yeah, successful. All right. Well. If I I'm gonna I want to deploy it, and I, again it's it's a, it's something that I carefully designed to make sure it doesn't interfere with our sensors, but just interferes with like you know the terrain yeah. that's there on the surface. And I want to beam the Scorpi that are on the outskirts that are not directly interacting with Commander Bashir, and I want to beam them up to the ship but put them into stasis. Okay, this is going to be a hell of a task. So. Oh, no. <laughs> Not to mention, yeah. I'm, I'm alone with the leaders, and like they're just all these people just disappear. It'll be good for me. No, oh, Excel. Wow. Everybody will go up, but a couple of us will be left behind. I see it coming. Okay, so this is going to be a difficulty of four test. I'm going to spend some threat to increase the difficulty to five. Oh no! Um, transport Jesus transporters God. because you want to beam them directly into stasis, so not you know into the transporter pad and then stasis them. Okay. Um, yeah. All right. So mm -hmm. this is probably going to be done by Zell. Yep. I'd like to assist her if possible. I would say that you can. Mm -hmm. Yes. Using a presence command here. Okay. I also like to spend a momentum. If necessary. Yeah. Well, which I think it is. Yeah. Um, what will the ship roll? Uh, the ship is rolling sensors plus engineering. I'm going to use this momentum to buy a die, so I'll roll 3d20 here. I figured you would, yeah. And, you know, if you didn't want me to do damage control, you should have uh, followed first contact procedures. <laughs> <Interesting>. <laughs> Honestly. <laughs> <laughs> now, now I know or... who's next on um, the uh, <laughs> evaluations. Okay. Who's running Zell? Uh, I'm, I'm tired of getting caught. I'm running Zell. Okay. <laughs> Take a charge. What, what am I going for here? Uh, this is uh, control plus engineering. Control, engineering, mm -hmm. 3D20, because I'm buying a dice with some momentum, and I have my focus. Do you want to do more quick. than that? Uh, yeah, sure. Okay. So that's two more momentum, and, and, that, and that gives you four? Right? To my, yeah, to my knowledge. You could, yeah, that's it. Mm -hmm. It's up to you, you're the active roller. Oh yeah, no, I am. Okay, so that's so far three successes, so the captain's going to have to crit here. Ah. Uh. So I'm existing with Presence Command, right? Mm, yes, Presence Command. Looking over her shoulder saying, come on, do it, 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 do it. Do it better. Do, would a focus apply for this role or no? Uh, focus would apply, so um, what do you have for focus? <sighs> oh, man. Paranoia. Um... <laughs> uh... <laughs> Very, damage very, control? Damage control. <laughs> very tangentially, this is less so trying to salvage an undercover operation. So can I use undercover operations? Oh, so, fine. I'll, I'll let that run. Oh, 
Oh, you're so generous. You're so good to me. You could also, you could also give Zell a, determ- a value because we activate her. Oh. We can do that. And then use that to reroll the zeros. Um, how does the value of... People are counting on me. Sound. Yeah. I love it. You uh, gonna type it in? Yeah, I'll do it. All right. Okay, so magically she gains a determination, and you know. Boom. Zelda's, and she gets to reroll the zeros, and she pops it. All right, so I'll go reroll here before I go assist here. Sure thing. So this was a control engineering control engineering. Attack. Oh please. Uh, well this oh. is I mean that's <laughs> oh, this is Captain we got one? Yeah, Captain only needs to make one now. So go Captain. Do it. Presence command two D twenty. Because the Nighthawk got one, so we got a total of six. Captain should have no only pie. rolled one dice there. Oh, yeah. Did I? Uh, wow. yeah. If you were assisting, that would only be one dice. Yeah. My bad. You're That's, right. You're right. You're right. Um, as tradition, I only I take the first die rolled, which is a zero, um, which is not enough, I'm afraid. So that is four and a complication. Okay. So who's being transported aboard? I'm trying to transport the Scorpy. Okay, just the Scorpy? Just the Scorpy. Okay. So they dematerialize. <clears throat> and now we've turned it into an incident. Okay. Whatever happened to them, we'll figure that out shortly. Um, so oh, they're going to be inside out, aren't they? <laughs> and they exploded. And what materializes is a Fatars child. Wait, what? <laughs> nope. Okay, so. There is cries of um, shock coming from the Scorpi that are around the side. And this has now become potentially far more um, threatening. As. We'll bring some of these chaps out for funsies. Resize them all instead of... One second. I am not good with tokens. My Discord, or my uh, Roll20 is beginning to act poorly. Hopefully it will survive. Okay, so those ones show up, and around the rear, on the other side of the forest, come a few other Scorpi, all of varying um, armor colors, but it is very clear that these ones have a far more, um, they're geared far more towards protection than anything else. They are coming up with weapons drawn. And definitely hostile, most likely, then. Absolutely. So these um, Scorpi begin to uh, clo- encircle you. Well, they begin to close from multiple directions. One of them shouts out, Okay, interlopers, what have you done with our... Uh, with our... Ah, what have you done with our preacher tech? Preacher tech? Our preacher tech, and he says that as if it's a commonplace word. You know, Valen, th- those three that were right there, now they're not here, and you guys are. What's going on? It must be something with the obelisk. Okay, that's going to require one heck of a bluff check. So, uh, this is I have be, BS as a focus. Uh, this is going to be a... You have? Did you say you have BS as a focus? I wish I did. I'm going to use my determination. <laughs> yeah, because this is going to be... good balances on a knife's edge. Yeah. This is going to be a difficulty of four test because they literally saw you vanish or saw them vanish right in front of their eyes. Could be the All other right. one, though. And 
attributes, discipline. Uh, if you have anything like um, BS or Guile <laughs> or bluff. I don't have any folk. Yeah. Covert Ops? Okay. Infiltration? No, not in this case. Cryptography? And no. I would like to assist here um, yeah. as well. I think someone assisting okay. would right. be a good idea. Because so co ops is going to be like, whoa, 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 don't, don't worry. We can figure this out. Hang just a second. You know, like, hold his hands up again. Um, can I also uh, apply infi insightful guidance? Uh, what um, does insightful guidance do? Okay. Whenever you assist a character who is in a social conflict using your knowledge of physiology or emotional states, the character is considered to have an advantage in addition to normal benefits provided by your assist. Oh, that's a very useful oh, one. And this beautiful. is most definitely a social conflict. Um, however, before you figure out what the said advantage is, it, go from there. You know, there were ten <coughs> that surrounding you. Right now, there's only nine approaching you. So where's the tenth one gone? However, uh, how would you like this advantage to play out? Let's see. That we succeed. <laughs> Um, anybody have any good ideas other than um, we don't have our weapons out, so like we're not hostile. We're just standing here, like kind of dumbfounded of, as to what happened. Exactly, uh, looking confused. You can toss um, the duck blind up. I mean, the duck blind's still there. You guys just have to make your way back to it. Um, <laughs> slowly inch your way over. <laughs> right. Yeah. Slowly that's disappear. Dude, I'm like, I'm here. Dude. I would just say that, you know, we have a very disarming appearance that we're just not, okay. we're not openly hostile. So hopefully that will. You okay. Know, we're... So that will decrease the difficulty by one, I'll say. And now if you can make your rolls, please. Okay. Uh, what am I rolling? Roll those be? Uh, this will no. be presence plus, uh, presence plus command. Uh, difficulty All right, two. I'll, and I'll burn that uh, um, momentum. Okay. Can um can I use persuasion again? Um yep, that would work for a focus. Okay, Coax does it. And I had already burned uh, my determination. Mm -hmm. Okay, uh, so that is three successes. I or three successes. So one momentum comes back. And two for oh, I burning my determination. Oh, you burned the determination so too. Times. My bad. Five. Okay. So that's three momentum to you guys. And I have veteran. Uh, yep. So re-roll or roll a challenge dice. Just one, right? Yep, just one. Oh, and I believe that means you get a momentum back. Second time is nice. So there is obviously a bit of confusion. There doesn't appear to be a ranking officer amongst the guards. Um, so they're like, well, they haven't shot us, so we're not allowed to shoot them. But they haven't, they, they haven't touched the obelisk, so yeah, not allowed to shoot them there. Well, come with us to the city. We'll let the proctor decide what to do with you. But we need to make sure nobody touches this obelisk so this doesn't happen again. That's our job, outworlder. Offworlder. We're just trying to help. That's all we're trying to do. We're just we as have... confused as you. Your help just cost just caused three of our most uh, vaunted individuals to vanish into thin air. I'd say we've had or, enough of your help. Now come with or us. Or are we quietly. the only ones that might be able to help bring them back? That's for the proctor to decide. Come with us. So we're still on the line with the ship, right? I would suspect that an open call oh. line is standard procedure at this point. Oh yes. Okay. Oh, uh, yes, my get us out of here. Get us out of here. Is so in, we'll, in panic. <laughs> you want us to walk back to your main settlement? Yeah, it's only. Yep, it'll only be a half day's walk. We can summon a motor. We can summon. We can summon a motor vehicle if those two legs of yours will get too tired too quickly. He seems to smirk a bit as he makes a pun. Some sort of transport, perhaps. Like oh, a transporter? Yeah. I get the idea. Yeah. Transporters would be would be nice. If if it would be appropriate. Okay. Yeah, if there were only five to beam up. Beam. <laughs> only if Zell doesn't do it. Okay. <laughs> Zell's looking Zell's giving the captain the side eye. Uh 
Captain... So, let me quickly cut back to the ship and explain what's going on here. Uh, so, you beamed the um, individuals straight into medical... St um, a medically prepared brig. It's been pumped full of knockout gas, etc. However, their constitution has proven much hardier than what than at first expected and they put up a bit of a struggle before passing out so they now have some memory of the ship how okay, many I, I, came on board all three of them did okay not four not four okay so we still have a missing one on the ground yep um and it's um so about this time the scorpion on the ship have passed out and Zell is now looking to the captain. Um, captain, they're asking for beam out. I'm assuming you'd like that to happen. Captain. Mm -hmm. I'm th I look contemplatively at the view screen while I'm weighing my options. <laughs> and my tra my trademark smile is now, much to a chagrin, a frown a we of anger and concern. We could walk all the way to your settlement instead of getting a transporter. Which is, <laughs> which is exactly what I was going to decide to do, which is half of a punishment <laughs> to the OA team and half of, well, let's see how many people actually decide to split. It's all um, Toki's fault. So at this point, I'm actually just going to let the proctors, well, let whoever these guys actually take the away team. My choice, only to see, because I want I want to see um, how they're dispersed. If they're all together, or if a vehicle comes, maybe we still have the chance to beam all of those individuals up at once. Okay. All right. Dr. Coax, why are we going to see a proctologist? <laughs> I... Because I, I feel like I've just seen one. You're getting another one when we get home. Uh, I could use a new uniform. Oh, great. So as you guys begin to get escorted out of the um, clearing and onto one of the near, nearby roads, first of all, it's clear that your uh, request for transport has gone unheeded. Um, however, um, yeah. the 10th member is there at an intersection waiting for you. And you can hear him chat. Well, sir, I've... Uh, I have procured a vehicle large enough for all of us, sir. It should be here in oh, only roughly a, a one hour or so. Oh, that's not too far for us. We'll start walking. Um, that, that's good. Just hopefully I don't go the blind, go blind in waiting on the transport. So. The I blind. Getcha. I get you. Yeah. <laughs> so I mean we'll go ahead and uh, take a take beam with the duck blind if possible. Okay. Just because you've had enough so fun that that one goes off without a hitch. Oh thanks. Um the deck goes off okay. Uh, Good the, job, Zell. Well Zell does have a question of what to do with the insects and the other fauna that may have been or have appeared in the uh wide beam transport. She beams them back down unharmed. Prime Directive must be maintained. Oh, now you care about the Prime Directive. Okay. <laughs> so, um, in, terms okay. Of, in terms of ranking officers that's on the ship, it's uh -huh. myself and Lieutenant Commander Tushan at this point, right? Uh, and Erkin, if you still count him among your uh, senior staff, yes. Well, I, I did, well, I was getting to him. I was, actually. <laughs> because I was about to say there might actually be a redshirt opening available for a good reason now. <laughs> <laughs> oh boy, howdy! Oh, Later. I well, sowed the seeds he planted at the beginning. Come, uh, well, I'm full circle. I'm, I'm a farmer at heart. Part part of part of this was totally planned. The other part wasn't. So, well, this is going. To, this was going to be a one shot episode, but this is turning into a two parter. So, I think we're going to call it here, and we will see what happens to the brave crew of the Nighthawk and their. Uh, brave captain watching overhead next session so i would like to say thanks to my players for participating thanks for everybody for watching 
I'm very interested to see what happens next week or next session because, well, now I have to think of a lot of new plot, apparently. So, <laughs> I thank you all for watching. Uh, we will be back in two weeks' time, which will be November the 7th. So, on behalf of myself and all my players, bye-bye.